there's beef jerky, but the animation for it is you drink it. You take the thing off and then you're like, <laughs> but it's beef jerky. It's so I hate I I hate it so much. Actually, <laughs> that's so, that that whatever the opposite of like ASMR. There's like yeah. the that that hurts my soul, God. dude. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast, a show dedicated to talking about all the progress things in life, like music, content creation, and video games. I am one of your co-hosts, Juicy Kazoom. And I'm Veritus. <laughs> I, I got... Your top I V. Know. The top V. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, my God. favorite new nickname. Top V. Fuck, man. What was that? Was that from, like, a chatter or something yeah, during yeah, the yeah. podcast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about you wanting to debate and how you were going to get red pills, and then someone was right. top V. Fucking God almighty, <laughs> dude. Oh, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm tired. Yeah. Today was today was interesting. I, I was like... So I, I played day one of the wipe. Okay. Um, I you wasn't played. going to. <laughs> yeah, well... Yeah. We'll get to that. Um... I was playing Arena, and I was having a lot of fun with Arena. Um, and I don't remember. Something happened. Couldn't really get into any games. I'm like, all right, fuck it. I'll just go play Tarkov. I'll just go play Tarkov. Yeah. And I played for like 45 minutes. Um, the new map was like cool for what I I played like yeah. two raids, three raids. Okay. Ended up getting like um, owned by some like three-man groups. Yeah. Um, and I just like brought in all my gear. So like lost all the decent guns with like the you know the dots and, and of all course the stuff you get yeah to yeah start. yeah um and uh and then after like forty five minutes I was like man I really just like don't want to do any of the quests yeah like I, I didn't so here's what I wasn't interested in I wasn't interested in pulling up a wiki pulling up a map yeah yeah yeah, and yeah. having to look at a website to figure out what to do right like no, I wanted I feel to play you. um so I'm like I'm just gonna go back to arena. Uh, yeah, the, I, the recoil felt incredible, and I was like, I really hope they bring it to Arena soon. And it was like the next day, dude. That was crazy, yeah. And it was like <laughs> night and day, dude. Like the first game, I went ten and four. The next game, I went fourteen and four. Yeah, um, with like my RSAS kit, and uh, it was incredible. Um, and ever since, yeah, Arena felt really good. Today, you know, everybody was on the the drops train yeah 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 and and i'm like 2800 2900 elo so oh. if i solo if i solo queue all the fucking streamers are playing normal tarkov yeah so i will wait for 20 minutes before i'll get in an arena game it's like what's the point of arena if Damn. i can't just get in get in get in um but when i queue with four or five other people yeah queue time is one second yep i press q brrr, because it's like game. at that high, it's like ninety eight percent five mans. So when you have a five man, it's just like five man, five man, boom. But when well, you're no, a solo, it's like. But that's the thing is that like I'm queuing up with the first fucking four randos in my chat that I can get in. Yeah. Um. And so some of them are fourteen hundred elo. Oh, interesting. So I'm facing like yeah. hodgepodge. Just every other game, it's like sometimes they're D minuses yeah. and sometimes they're fucking B that's pluses. That's fascinating. I think that's one of the guys I played day. against today was one of the fucking VP dudes. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We played against them. I might have been with you. One or two of the, the first pro guys was on there. Yeah. Um, so, um, but w was sick of waiting. Jumped on yeah. to, to, to do uh, into Tarkov. Uh, first thing, I'm like, all right, cool. Let's do a scav run. My scav's got a fucking pilgrim. 15 minute. Can't get into queue, a game. Yep. Back out of the queue go do a raid i had i had a couple of good raids um i had a really good raid on interchange got a fucking three man it was like waited one go by two go by you know and killed all three of them by the time i had lost both my legs my stomach my arms of course i'm like take seven billion years to heal yeah. and then a three-man player scav like five minutes into interchange come right yeah. to me yeah yeah. So I was a little bit salty about that. I, I feels sure. like it was the same dude. Could have even killed. have been the same dudes. Yeah. It was a little tight time wise, but that that was frustrating. And then yeah. basically I've just been doing I grab a uh, like an M9 and I go to a factory. Yeah. And like my last raid, I just clear factory with the pistol. And that's like the only fun I've been having. Yeah. Because I hate waiting. I haven't done a scav run today. Not a thing. I haven't been able to. Because yeah, because like, yeah. There's dude, man, there's so much to get through in there. But yeah, it's <clears throat> it's 
it's been it's it's been interesting that the scabbing thing like we'll, we'll get to more chronological stuff in a second but the scabbing thing is so interesting we were just talking about that a lot people all day all day all day all day and this this isn't a surprise to me because this is like the fifth wipe in a row so this is literal years of this happening but all day people are like dude scab rate cues scab rate cues scab rate cues they take so long and there's two things that play there one uh I have a suspicion that at any given moment, more players are attempting to scav into a raid than PMC. Like, I just think early wipe, everybody, you know, scaving is the free stuff. You want the quest items. You're, you know, you have the most to lose. So a lot of people are scaving. And it's one of those yeah. things where the math doesn't always check out, right? If there's more people scaving and less people PMCing, you need active PMC raids in order to scav in. So, you know, you're going to wait. But... The, you would uh, think that that would favor solo scavs. But that's the thing. Here's the second part of that. So on one hand, scav queues take a long time. That's understandable because it's early wipe. The flip side of that is I don't know why, but it, it's as close to empirical evidence as possible that grouping gets you in quicker. And I don't yeah. know what the logic is behind it. Because this is like, like we've said, we've talked about it every wipe. This is like wipe five where this has happened. Where if you solo queue a scav raid, you're going to be waiting 27 minutes. But if me, Valiant, and Airwing scav one, we're in in four. Yep. I and don't know why. Thing, and the same thing happens with Arena. Yeah. As well. And which, and again, if it's you think weird. about like Arena, Arena even has matchmaking and it's the same thing. Like there's, there's, there's some logic yeah. where they prioritize it. Uh, there has to be. Um, there has to yeah. be. Yeah. It's just, it's wild because especially with the player scav thing, everything like i can't think of a single reason you wouldn't want the opposite it's more fun to fight solo player scavs than groups of five player scavs right it's uh the solo player scavs are most likely people who are playing solo so you you want to almost give them a bone because in their pmc raids they're probably running up into pmc squads so it's like everything goes in the favor of like let the solos in quick. You know what I mean? I, as somebody who almost exclusively plays with other people, I really wouldn't mind if that switch was made. If it takes me longer to get into a raid as a three man and get into a scav raid than the solos. Um, yeah, like you would think just uh, yeah. like, like spitballing a fucking queuing algorithm. If there's, let's say, five slots available, you would think that it's, it's easier to find five individuals to pop in there yes. than than it is to find, like, once you find a three, then you need to look for only a two, yeah. right? As opposed to, like, I don't know. And you'd think it would just, just always find a group and then fill the rest with solos, right? Three, one, one. You know, like, just, like, you just find a four-man, get one solo in. Find a two-man, get three so Like, you just think it would be easier to constantly fill with the solos because there's so many people attempting to solo. So, I don't know what that logic is, but, yeah, I definitely see that's frustrating. Now, to get into it. So, we had the wipe. Um, uh, it was classic, like, uh, they, they debated us on every step of it. They remember, I told you like they, um, <laughs> they were like in the weird video with the cat guy during the event, it was like the 26th, like they super alluded to something. It was like, you know, learn to see what people hear people put in. It was like 12, 26, nothing happened on the 26th, nothing that I can remember. And so then everybody went, okay, well, if it's not the 26th, it has to be the 28th because the 28th is a Thursday. And it ended up being the 27th. So they didn't do the thing they debated us into and they didn't do the Thursday meme. They did it right in the middle and they did it on the 27th, which I found to be hilarious. Um, so before we get to the patch notes, man, I just want to like right off the rip be like, I'm so, because we have to talk about it or else people are going to be so mad. And it was super brutal. The, the rollout of the wipe, man, was so rough. And it's so brutal because we'll talk about each of the features. In my opinion, this is one of the one of, if not the greatest Tarkov wipes we've ever had. Mm -hmm. Objectively. This, this is one. This is, yeah, top two, top three greatest Tarkov wipes ever. And I'm seeing that sentiment from like Giga Chad W keyers and from like slow tactical realism guys. Like everybody loves this. But it was so shrouded by like the the problems in the beginning, and plus with this the, the arena drama leading up to it, yes, that led everybody yes. salty. Yes, everybody was on peak, like on the precipice of being salty and super frustrated because of how bad. Which once again, like we talked about, objectively bad the launch of arena was. Right, 
this comes around. Now, what I'm expecting is, and, and it's obviously we've, we've heard in chat, people have been, you know, vacillating everywhere in between. Like, this is inexcusable. BSG is such a joke. So like, come on, what do you expect? And I get all of the opinions within then. I will say what I would normally expect is what we get every wipe, which is everybody gets in. And as a result of that, we get some crashes. We get some long queue times, you know, you know, matchmaking into a PMC raid, maybe taking five, six, seven, eight minutes. Um, that's what I expected. What I didn't expect is um, the, the same thing that happened in Arena where you, you weren't even allowed, like most of the people weren't even allowed in. Like the patch hit, me and Seal and Velian were supposed to play. Me and Seal started downloading the patch immediately and Velian just sat twiddling his thumbs for two hours looking at the launcher and he couldn't update. And then, and then uh, two hours sounds like a long time. Th that turned out to be nothing compared to some of the people in my chat eight hours later, 10 hours later, 12 hours later being like, I can't download the patch. So I understand the people who were like, well, it's, you know, it's a Tarkov wipe. What do you expect? I, I get that. But what I expected was already low and it was really brutal. The fact that people weren't allowed in, the fact that people couldn't download for forever, the fact that the launcher was having issues. If you were in the game, as long as you had, didn't close the game, you could play perfectly fine. Frames were good. No crashes, no everything. But it the launcher... It 45 minutes to play today. Yeah, the launcher just wasn't working. So like, I do have high praise to say for a lot of these features, but I do feel like we got to start off with like, Ah, that was, that's rough. It just clouded it, the whole thing. You know what I mean? What would have just been W after W after W. It's just so hard when you, and, and then once again, it started rolling again, like streamer privilege, which once again, I understood because I'm playing and you're not. So it's like, I get it. You know, that just happened with arena and it just, it just muddied the waters of what would have been such a W of a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, Brutal. And, and here's, and here's the, the, the saddest part too is this whole like what do you expect you know bsg <clears throat> that that sentiment on one side and the other side is like they'll iron it out yeah i i can't take like either of those things like either yeah. of them seriously they, yeah they both they both are just like cringeworthy because yeah. by the time they figure it out they won't be making any more updates and the game will be out and it'll be done and it won't matter anymore because yeah. you know what i mean yeah so it's like we're 95% of the way through the development and the releases have are always shitty. So at this point, I'm like, they're just always going to be shitty. Like, it just makes me more like bitter. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Like, well, every other fucking thing from now on is just going to be shitty. And, you yeah. know, and um, and for some people, it's shittier than others. Some people got got it right away. They could install it right away and they yeah. had no problems. And, um, you know, some people are like still trying to play now and they can't. Right. Like even today, again, I like, I I was I played a little bit yesterday. Um, today I went to play. Every time I hit play, it would just escape from Tarkov, quit working. Yeah, and I had to like, fucking basically do a clear, yeah, fresh install of the goddamn thing to get it working. Yeah, um, yeah. There, there's so much. Yeah, so much. It was rough. It was brutal. It was brutal. And like you said, both ends of the spectrum were brutal to hear you know what i mean the like oh stream probably but then also the like oh my god why are you mad it's like yeah i don't know it just it blows me away that people can't understand that that's a frustrating thing like people are like what do you expect well it's like dude i don't know like i expected even by bsg standards for it to be buggy and it was worse you know what i mean so and then it was brutal because like a lot of people you know you want to play together so like two people in the squad get it and three people don't and then it's just like oh you know what i mean then these guys are and that just feels bad you know what i mean so um especially since I feel like no I, I don't know anything about the technical thing here and I definitely don't want to sound uh ignorant or uneducated even I mean I know I am so I guess I should sound that way but it's just crazy because like I feel like they have a, a decent handle on a rough estimate of how many people are going to play the game you know what I mean and so like they've just done so many wipes I don't know well so it was so what one other thing about this is that like I don't I don't know that the number of people is relevant. Yeah, that's true. I don't think it I think you it know, was like just every something happened. Everyone every one of these issues that that everybody's talking about 98% of the fucking comments are the servers are on fire and it drives me nuts because most of the issues that we experience have nothing to do yeah. with the server load. Everything if you got in 
the game was fine. Like the, it was yeah. didn't feel like the servers were desync. It didn't feel like it was that it was taking time long time to match. You know, it was all just it was just yeah, something like, with it, the authenticator or the login. The website was down, and a lot of people experienced this. If they had to reset their password, they needed to wait for an email, but the website was down, so they couldn't get an email to reset their password to log into the launcher, which was buggy to see if they could download it, which some people couldn't. It was like at every step. It yeah, was, so like with with Arena, they had an issue where um, if there was a new version of the game available, remember this? You had to leave... If yeah. you left the game and you went and hit check for updates, nothing would happen. But yeah. if you closed it, opened it up, it would find the update. Yeah, yeah. And people were trying to queue up where one of the five of them had the new version. The other four didn't. One yeah. person would get the error. They'd all have to leave all of that bullshit, all of that that went on. Yeah. And But people sat in matching or they sat with all kinds of, you know, like leaving, trying to leave. And their explanation for everything was... BSG servers are on fire. Why don't they just get more servers with the blah, yeah. blah, blah? There's so many people playing or either there's so many people playing servers are on fire or there's nobody playing and the game's dead. Yeah. And it's like with Arena, that was one thing on a different day than Arena on another day than Tarkov was yeah. yesterday versus Tarkov today. And yeah, I agree. God, it's just like so, I, I have to hear servers on fire. All yeah, fucking yeah. Time. So, so Yeah. It was brutal. I think, like, if you're one of those, like, yeah, just if you're just cringing every time someone's frustrated, understand it's a genuinely frustrating thing. But if you take it too far, like, once again, it was going to ban a bunch of people because they come in and they express this frustration in a way that's weird and toxic and gross and cringe and uh, pointing it towards streamers or weirdly personal on BSG. It's like, okay, you're also weird. Just be frustrated. It, it was like, it was rough. It was, it was a really rough wipe launch. Now, that being said, <laughs> that is, um, that is where, I don't know, most of the negativity stops from me. Uh, we'll go through the patch notes and, uh, talk through some things, but dude, the TLDR is, I'm, I'm, we're three days in, I've played 10 to 15 hours all three days. And I love this wipe so much. I'm interested because I am going to talk about some stuff like I uh, reflect. I don't know if reflect. Or I share that sentiment, though. Uh, uh, I want to talk about that later of like, well, yes, I don't want to do these quests. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, even though I'm having so much fun. But let's go through the patch notes and talk through some of the stuff. Um, ground zero. The map. You said you got to play it a little bit. I did like three yeah. raids in it and like literally I would spawn and I never left like a 30 meter circle. Yeah. It was like spawn in, see somebody, kill them, go to loot them, Die. you know, get my bearings a little bit, you know, hear some footsteps, go to engage, get shot, rinse and repeat like three times. Yeah. I have no idea where to go. I didn't pull up the wiki, didn't pull up a map. I never yeah. even got that far. So it, I don't know, seems yeah, <laughs> cool. It, it's honestly, it seems like if you had told me that was the streets expansion, yes. I would have just assumed that was it. And that that kind of is what it is, right? Because it's located in streets of Tarkov, like that's where that is. They just wanted to carve that out as the. So uh, it's it wasn't engineered strictly to be the tutorial zone, the noob map. A lot of people are calling it that. I mean, it is because you can, you know, you ha have to be level twenty or below. It's also supposed like that's where we're all going to start in 1.0. Everyone starts on ground zero and you have to accomplish tasks and you unlock the next map. And like they've said that before that you you have to quest through the maps. Then when you unlock them all, you can keep questing and doing stuff and then you can eventually escape Tarkov. So it's also the starting map. So it's not exclusively now. Um, I think, that, you know, surprise to no one. Their map design is great. It's immersive. It's really cool. There's some touches. You can there's some really cool touches because in the in the patch notes here it says that this is where the original conflict began. Did you notice all over the place? You know how like all over Tarkov there's like the dead scavs and you can loot them? Did you notice all over the place it's dead PMCs? I never in, never saw one. All over like puffy jacket, like all of the and there there's like eight different outfits of the clothing you can get as a USEC. Huh. And they're and That's you can cool. loot them. And like the first one I looted had a 60 round M4 mag on it. So I don't think it's that common to find that stuff, but I think it's skewed a little bit more towards like military loot on them. That's so neat. like little uh little touches like that are cool. Uh, surprise to no one, their their map design is amazing. Their environmental team is cool. It's a pretty small map, which is what we expected. 
Um, also, I doubt you saw these either. All over the map are maps. You know, you walk up into a shopping mall and there's a, a, a kiosk thing and it says you are here. They're all over Ground Zero. And it literally... It was with a little dot? Yes. It's That's cool. Sick. And so I checked my extract and one of the extracts was like Nagatani Plaza. Uh, Nagatani had it all interchanged, dude. It yes. even makes sense. Yeah. And one of the extracts is like Nagatani Basement Stairs. And then I walked up to the sign and I saw the building in the southeast corner is called Nagatani. So I was like, I bet the extract's over there. And we went and I found it. And so I was like, okay, this is sick. Like, this is cool. This feels that's, friendlier that's awesome. to new players. You know what I mean? Um, I uh, And then there's four or five new quests on there. The new quests were pretty cool. They weren't too bad. One was just like take the car extract, which kind of shows you that you can take car extracts. Um, there's a flare extract there with a scav that always spawns with a green flare, which is kind of cool because once again, the, the theory here is like teaching people some of the interactions and stuff like that. That's cool. Wait, the scav spawns with a green? There's a dead scav yeah. that spawns with a green. Oh, a, de a dead scav. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I've been away for a while. And do I walk up and engage in like a dialogue tree <laughs> yeah, with a scav? Like, right? Handshake with him. Yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> so it's cool. I will say um, it has some things I would change if we were if we're aiming at this being like a more beginner friendly map. Uh, there is a spawn where you can spawn in, and if you take three steps forward, you hit a you hit a mine. <laughs> Literally three steps, which I think yeah. is the key, brutal. Uh, in the I watched a, a little bit, a little bit of the uh, um, the little fucking Nikita's podcast. Oh, today, today yeah. I, I clicked into the vault afterwards, um, and literally I started playing, and all Nikita says was "God help us." <laughs> it was the first thing, and I'm like, well true true um, but he was talking about the map and he was saying they added those mines without telling him uh and he and w and when he heard he was like oh fuck like that's not good he's like that's not very new player friendly and i'm assuming he's probably like but that's dark oh yeah i'm probably, sure i'm probably sure committed to the bit that's um, crazy um yeah. but the the big one is there's a there's a in the bank there's an open door and like a safe in one of the teller things. And uh, you know how there's two types of landmines in Tarkov. There's the landmines that you can hit and they break your leg. And then there's the claymores on streets that instant kill you. I've only I've only experienced the claymores on Lighthouse. I thought they were on Correct. They yeah. they added them on Lighthouse first, then they added them on streets outside of Lexos. And, yeah, those and there's yeah, a random that. room. In the bank, in ground zero, and it's an open door, and there's a safe in it, and you walk up to it, and there's a claymore in it, and it just and it's kills just you. An instant kill. Instant kill. Yeah, that's. I was like, fucking stupid. I was like, that's so dumb, dude. It's like hilarious. <laughs> like, do that for an event for yeah. one day, and then also, if you die to that, there should be a flag that's like, you get your get your gear yeah, back, dude, or something you know like I mean? that. Like, like if it's just... gonna be a meme, then it would be um, fucking funny. Otherwise, it's just brain dead i was like dude that's lame um anyways other than that i i mean i think the map is cool the only thing so the the two things one thing i would change and i think uh it, i think there's too many spawns i think there's too many pmcs on the map uh like the experience you had is the experience i had it's the experience everybody's had i've had a lot of people be like dude ground zero is not factory ground zero is factory plus ground zero is factory a plus outside it's a super small map and i think there's 12 people that can spawn max it's too many i spawned it sounded like he was considering reducing the number of spawns. yeah i spawned in uh and literally just rounded a corner and there was a pmc right there and i killed him so, uh, yeah i think uh i i mean i think it's funny because you and me have talked about how in general across all the maps you know tarkov might feel better if there were 10 to 15 less pmcs but especially on the map that's about maybe like introducing you to the Tarkov experience, not getting the factory forklift experience every raid, which seems like every spawn on ground zero is the factory forklift experience would probably be a good thing. I think there's a max of 12. I think six to there eight should be six. I it think six to eight six. would be much, much better. Now, I and he's also he's also changing it. Um, I think I don't know if it's in yet where there will be two queues. Yes, that was the thing. So uh, on the patch notes, it said level one to 20. And then over 20, you can't get in. But apparently on the podcast today, yeah, he said they're going to reduce that to 15 and then create a separate queue. So you can go to ground zero all the time. But if you're, uh, 
16 or above, you just queue in with everybody else. Um, which I think is cool because the map is cool and genuinely above 16, I, I think that map will end up being like factory plus. It'll just be an outside map to like spawn in and get into super aggressive PVP right off the rip, um, yep. which would be kind of fun. So, uh, so ground zero is cool. Oh, oh, and the other thing about ground zero is everyone's like, it's not a beginner map. And I was like, well, the thing you have to realize is no one in Tarkov for the first two days was level 20 or above. So it's like people. I, I had a lot of people be like, "Dude, I keep running into Chads on Ground Zero." It's like I get it. I'm not saying stop playing. I'm just saying like in a week it'll be much more noob friendly, right? Because all the but you know everyone, Landmark, Pestily, Rengar, me, everyone's on Ground Zero because it's the new map. It's not very new friendly at first, but if you come in two months into a wipe, that's going to be a great place to go. You know what I mean? Assuming now that I mean this is probably true, but it might not be. It might not be true to a meaningful degree that, that that that's the case so like think about this the whole idea where it's like if you have a if there's a limited number of items available <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, to put on the flea market yeah then that should control the price and blah 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 but if you think about that you always have like an infinite supply there's effectively an infinite number of like, yeah most items there's just you know so many um I feel like the same kind of principle applies where there probably will always be veteran players starting at any given time between and be between level one to 15 yeah. throughout the course of the next year, you know, or three months or whatever, sure. playing this wipe that there will always be a couple of veterans in there that will always dominate every lobby. So I'm not sure. I understand it, it be the case that it's that. Yeah. that yeah. I understand what you're saying. I don't think the pendulum will ever swing to zero. Like the ratio of Timmy to veteran will ever swing to zero veterans, all Timmies. But I would, because someone said chat, someone said in chat to you, will streamers reset their account? I bet if you add up every veteran that comes in late wipe and every streamer that resets their account, you smash them together. And the percentage of people that are playing at that given moment, that'll be like 10%. Whereas I would say, Day one, two, three of the wipe, the percentage of people that have played before that are excited to hop back in versus new players, it's like 70, 30. So, mm -hmm. so my guess is you're absolutely right. There will always be people that had reset your account there. You'll always be veterans that were like, yo, you know what? I'm going to check out Tarkov now. But I just think that ratio will swing so far. I'm not saying it'll feel perfect. I'm saying it'll feel better than it does on day two of the wipe. Maybe we'll, 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 we'll see. And I'll, comes I'll never to, know because I'll probably I won't be coming. I won't be playing. No, you will point. because your chat will be full yeah. for the next three months of people saying, yeah. "Man, there's why are there just always squads of Giga Chads on yeah. this map? It's supposed to be for noobs." Yeah, prepare yourselves three months from now. Yeah, I guess we'll see. Will. I guess we'll see. I, I hope I'm wrong. I just get I have the vibe that there's I think there's enough people that are going to be low level for the entire white. Yeah, there's enough people starting. Yeah. But the other thing, there'll always be people getting shit on by the perception of more skilled, higher geared people. That's true. Here's the thing, though. Even if that's true, it's still a better universe because you won't be able to get dumpstered on by a dude with a slick and an Alton. Does that make sense? So, well, yeah, you'll but, be much less likely. But, but that's what I'm saying. It, as in three months in. It's it's we're going to talk about the same sentiment here. I don't know if there's a word for it, but with the recoil later on. I say the pendulum of veterans to Timmy's swings way towards more Timmy's three months into the wipe. But even if you're even if somebody were to argue with me, I don't think it's going to swing as far as you think. And I say you're right. It's still a better universe for a new player because they can't run into a level 50 right now. What, what do people say when they say, you know, I'm I'm new. Where where should I go? People are like customs. Maybe go play woods. Maybe play factory. You go to customs. Me and Valian roll customs all day. You go to woods. Me, Jay, and Seal are running around with AXMCs. So it's like at least even if the ratio is more veterans than I think, you're still going up against people who are similarly geared to you, even in in a world where there's more chance. Maybe. But you like, you have to concede that it's better it's, it's, i'm not saying it, all yes, the way ab yes, absolutely okay okay but it's but what you have to recognize is it's a binary the dude who goes in with a makarov and nothing yeah. else 
everybody playing the game has more gear than him. For sure. And if they confidently run voice line and kill him, no matter what, they could have level three armor. For sure. It was a Giga Chad that shat on them. I, I agree. So that's what I'm saying. It's I'm, like, it's, I'm talking yes, about the perception. You're, yes, I was just going to say that. You're talking about the perception. I'm talking about the reality. And I, I agree with what you're saying, that the perception of those new players will still be, I got absolutely dumpstered. But and I'm saying but the perception is the experience for so sure. Whether they get shit on by someone level 50 who's sure. level six out of their mind or someone who's level 12 who's level three out of their mind. Yeah, it, the experience is not going to be different for them, which is the whole point of this whole thing. Right. All we care about yeah. is that new players have a better experience. Yeah. So if if I if I'm right, which I hope I'm not. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Then. The whole we've solved things for beginners. Yeah. Right. Or might not come yeah. to fruition. I hope I'm wrong, For sure. like I said. I still think that there's part of the experiences, like if you log on and three of your 10 raids, you get dumpstered on by Chad's, the perception, whether that was the reality or not, or when you hop on in 10 out of your 10 raids, you get dumpstered on by Chad's. Even if you get off and you're like, man, I'm still getting dumpstered on by Chad's, I still think that there's a that was a net positive. Like what I'm saying, and what I was, I'm going to say the same thing with the recoil, is that it ends up being a net positive. It, it's in no way worse. It might be better. No one's going to be able to do the math on if it's better, but we still live in a universe where it might be better and it can't be worse. And so in my opinion, that's a net positive. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, yeah, on, on average, you're going to be more likely to have a better experience. Yeah. But everybody always has a bad experience in Tarkov Correct. All the that's time. a great way to put <laughs> so, it. That's a great way to put it. You're statistically more likely to have a better experience, but it doesn't matter because in Tarkov, you always have a bad experience. <laughs> and I, I, I know a lot, of, a lot of newer players or people yeah. who maybe played one wipe and struggled are going to go in thinking... I'm going to have a better experience yes. at this map and they're going to get dumpstered and like they have been. And that's such so. a good point is that not only is perception important when you're talking about the experience, perception is important with what you perceive ground zero to be. I think a lot of people went in and they're like, this is the noob map. And they expected like offline mode with progression. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's not what it is. I would be down with like you able to play offline on ground zero and get to level five. Literally. That's the true like new player experience. Yeah. And then from level five to 15, you can play ground zero online and then 15 or 16 and up you play ground zero in the other queue. I genuinely think that would be better. And I think the perception of a lot of people is almost that that's what it was going to be. And it's not. It's 12 people in a tiny map and it's Rengar and Landmark coming after you. You know what I mean? So um, anyways, uh. Uh, they added the new boss, Colin Ty. I haven't seen him yet. Uh, he's Colin, Colin what? Colin Ty. Colin Ty? Colon Ty. I don't know how to pronounce it, but it's Colin Ty. Um, he works with Caban. They're homies. Uh, he's dressed up in, he's got police stuff on. He's got like armor all over. I haven't seen him yet. He's in the, uh, the new mall area on streets, which I don't think you spent too much time on the expansion of streets. You played... The wipe streets came in, but you didn't play I much. Never, I had never, I never played. Yeah, after. last wipe. Yeah, the August to December wipe. Okay, so in the new area of streets that you haven't seen, there's a mall that looks way better than Interchange, and that's where Colantai is. The only thing I know about him is that uh, his melee weapon is a rubber police baton, and it's lootable, and you can whack people with it. And I love it. <laughs> um, is it floppy? No, it's like hard. Um. Okay, the other things, dude, the other boss, what I think, Caban has new guards. I haven't fought Caban yet either. Boss Caban is joined by his closest, closest associates, Bazmatch and Gus. Bazmatch and Gus. Since the time of Caban's involvement with the business, they have served as his loyal associates, solving many delicate issues for him. These Ooh, two literal, delicate. these two quote unquote dandies <laughs> like to dress up at Ragman's place and organize illegal street races through the streets of Tarkov in uh, tuned cars from Kaban's dealership. Bazmach and Gus always stay close to Kaban and charge into battle for him. They prefer unique clothes to their battle gear, though there are occasional exceptions. So, like, they made a really big point to say that these dudes look fly. Like, these guys are all about looking good. And I haven't seen well, wait, any pictures also, like, of them yet. Were they also alluding to them, like, maybe kissing? Or I don't know. This, I have a Word document open where I have a bunch of notes about how, like, my fan fiction that I'm working yeah, on about yeah. these two guys now that... Bosmach and Gus. So, I haven't seen them. 
But uh, it's so freaking funny, dude. It's so funny. I haven't seen Hell it yet. Hell yeah. I can't, I can't wait to go to fucking Imager. Imager? Yeah. Im- Imager? Imager? I don't, I've never known. I, I, was, I don't think anybody really yeah. knows. Um, okay. Next thing. The Shoreline Rework. Have you been yet? Have you seen anything? I I played, yeah, I played. Uh, I literally only played Shoreline and Factory um, today. And um, I spawned way back in the fucking corner opposite the tunnel. Um, oh, so by the new barn? No. No, okay. I mean... <sighs> Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, like, kind of over by the landmine sort of area. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, like, literally cross the street and just, like, run gotcha. towards, like, the the radar tower area. Yep, okay. Um, So, I saw that there's, like, a little, like, lake there. Yeah. I saw the snow, which we'll get to. Um, yeah. Uh, and I went to the resort. I died in one of them. Um, The, the fucking really cool thing was the being able to get up to the second floor for that truck with a ladder on the back the was fire like truck dude insane it was just so cool to be able to get up there such um, a great additional entrance and exit yeah to the east and lake. the lighting i don't know they just like turned on like fucking uh <laughs> ray tracing or something because i was walking downstairs with like the yeah. light and i'm like the lighting looks great looks gorgeous of course i after i said that Everything kind of was flickering a bit. Yeah. And then I got disconnected from the raid. Um, it took me like five minutes to get connected again. But overall, it looks really fucking sick. Dude. The magnitude. So like because we were waiting on Velian to like get access, me and Seal were just like running around in offlines. We offline ground zero and we offline shoreline. Dude. The amount they changed this map. And Veritas like not just the amount they changed it for changing its sake, the amount they changed it as a direct result, or at least the appearance of the direct result of like feedback of the map. Like everybody hates on shoreline and everyone's like, it's just open planes and then like weird POIs, right? Like the weather station was a great one. If the goons were up on weather station, good luck. They can Mm -hmm. see for 800 meters and, and there's no good way to get up to the weather station, right? They just beam you. So, like, the weather station is a great example. You can now get up to the weather station from basically any angle. There is tons of hard cover. That entire field that you spawned near, it was com- the topography is completely redone. There's more hard cover. There's more trees. There's the lake. There's more way to break line of sight of people. You know the hill everybody likes to sit up on that overlooks the gas station and snipe, like, pier? Yep. That entire area completely redone. New topography. Well, and, they, and they also did the rocks leading up to, I think, East Wing. The one with, like, the fire yes. truck or whatever. That I ho- expected to have to just jump up rocks, and it was just, like, a nice sloping. And I'm like, holy fuck. It looks like they learned a lot from Lighthouse. Because Lighthouse can get really toxic on, like, you just have to jump and, like, jump and jump. And you just lose all your stamina. It's, like, and staircases. And a ton of noise. Yes. And it looks like they learned. And it's... It's like the vi- the nice visual somewhere. aesthetic of Lighthouse, but with much more, like, you can just walk up these paths. So yeah. West Wing is the same. By the way, you were on East Wing. West Wing, getting up is completely different. Uh, in the West Wing, in the back near Path to Lighthouse, they redid a bunch of stuff. They moved the truck that was over there. They didn't do much around Tunnel or, like, the villages or cottages. All that looks the same. And then, additionally... So where you spawned by the landmines, like, you're looking and you're like, okay, the resort is up here. The east wing is up here. If you had gone to your right, they opened up a whole new area of the map and there's like a a fence and you hop over the fence and there's this barn. There's like, con, dude, it looks like a little piece of reserve, but with some shoreline, there's like fenced barn places where animals are, where the animals would have been. There's tons of buildings. There's connexes. Can you fucking imagine if there's just like, (laughs) dude, just cows or something? There's like all sorts of stuff you can get up on the top of the barn and see out for a really long time. There's a built into the ground shooting range with targets like the freaking hideout targets, like where the huh. people who lived there would have practiced target Were practice. There, can you like reset them? Is no, there like a no, and but, no, but like they're spread out and you can, it's really cool. There's tons of loot out there. There's tons of scavs out there. Um, there's, dude, it, there's a lot out there. It's really cool. 
And uh, they also added a car extract on Shoreline up in that corner. So in that barn area, Shit. there's a car extract and there's a SCAF PMC extraction as well. And okay. they added Rock Passage back, but they made it Red Rebel and Paracord, which I never really cared about. Every I want I've wanted that I wanted that for a long now. Yeah. See, I wanted it back three wipes ago yeah. when I had a red rebel and I was running shoreline yeah, at the time. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, but uh now it's like I just like don't want to run a paracord. That's the only thing is I don't have to <laughs> shove a paracord in my gamma. Oh fucking boo hoo. <laughs> I know. Um but yeah, so they added so they added the red rebel extract back, they added a scav co op extract, they added a car extract, they retouched all the POIs they retouch the resort. The lighting in the resort is much better. You can shoot the construction lights in the resort. NVG's the resort. It's going to be a game changer. It was and the only out. map in the game where you couldn't shoot the construction lights and they would just make using NVG's in the resort just aids because you couldn't see anything. And then you turn them off and the lights are only pointed one direction. Um, oh, chat with the clutch. And they added green smoke to the pier when the pier extract is up. I saw that. Dude, they like fixed shoreline. It's so sick. I wonder if the light's still there because there used to be a spotlight. There used to be a spotlight. That has and a... I think that I, I don't know if they, they just like couldn't figure out how to fix that bug. <laughs> yeah. And they're just like, fuck it, just put up flares. Put like we've flare. got that working. Yeah. So, oh my God, it's so sick. Now, here's the deal though with the shoreline changes. I love every all of them. And so many people were like, does this mean freaking shoreline isn't AIDS anymore? And it, it all comes down to what you want out of Tarkov. If you want to spawn in and in seven seconds or less be picking up a Bitcoin or be fighting someone, you're still going to hate Shoreline, right? Because the resort is still going to be the POI where the, all that's going to happen. And if you're, you're going to SJ6 there and be mad. I loved Shoreline. I loved sniping on Shoreline. I love early wipe Shoreline. I love resort fights on Shoreline. And so it's like, if you're the cracked out adrenaline junkie that wants streets because you can just like fall into a Bitcoin or another PMC spawn, then yeah. you're probably still not going to like Shoreline, right? But I think it's awesome. I think they really actually addressed a lot of the issues that the map has. Uh, no, you know what I mean? The primary driver of any map in Escape from Tarkov is the loot. And no, there isn't insane Bitcoin loot or Ledex loot at any of these POIs. So if that's the main driver of your gameplay experience, you're probably still not going to like Shoreline. Um, but there's also like a red key card spawn and a few other things. Yeah. So if you're like me, you get super lucky and then we'll never be able to afford to sell it. Yeah. Actually, they fixed that, right? Yeah, they did actually. But yeah. Uh, so freaking Shoreline W. W, W, W. Um, okay. Next thing they added new, uh, equipment. They added a few new things, new backpacks, new, uh, random stuff. They've added some new food items. They added the, the ramen noodles. Have you seen that? It's ramen yeah. noodles, but when you eat them, he just breaks a piece off and eats the dry noodles, which is so funny. Um, and they added like, well, what do you expect them to do? Add hot water no, and like stir the because cup? Because that's just like a meme. Cause some people eat ramen that way. And it's like, it's just funny because that's like a meme. People eat ramen dry. I've eaten, I've done it before. I, I mean, I would assume that if I was in that position, yeah. Oh, I'd yeah. You would have to. Like a goddamn There's cracker. beef jerky, but the animation for it is you drink it. You take the thing off and then you're like. <laughs> but it's beef jerky. It's so... I hate I, I hate it so much, actually. <laughs> that's that that whatever the opposite of like ASMR. There's like yeah. the, that that fucking. That hurts my soul, dude. What the fuck? Um, I don't know why. Why does that bother me so much? Oh my god, what yeah. the fuck? Dude, it's weird. Drinking beef jerky, the the sentence should never be uttered. Yeah. Uh so if you find some beef jerky, drink it. Um, they added uh some new guns. I just watched a whole video on uh toast sandwich, by the way, and that's just reminded me of yeah, you to you, yep, mm -hmm, two pieces of bread, put some butter, just put some butter on them. Uh, s uh, salt and pepper, and then a piece of toast, and then put the toast in between that. <laughs> Why does that sound good? It's not. I want it. A toast sandwich? Hell yeah! yeah. Go to the go to the Wikipedia page. There's a Wikipedia page. <laughs> of on it. course there is. That's uh, what I watched the video on. Of course there is. Um, 
They added some new weapons, uh, which we got as a Christmas gift, by the way, or a New Year's gift if you haven't yet. Escape from Tarkov.com, log in your profile, oh, sure. and uh, you get one of the new, the KS or KBP or VSK. Or there's eight names. It's the 9891, but then there's the VSK94. I don't know which, why they're different, but they're both Val ammo, 9x39. There's, uh, you can suppress them, but they're like little SMGs. You get one of those, like 620 round mags, a bunch of SP5, and uh, they're cool. Um, Bro, am I the only person that when you go, I go to the Escape from Tarkov website and I go to log in, I'm using my password manager. It just auto populates it. It fails. Yes. Every and time. And then I hit log in and it just works. Yep. Every time. But the actual fuck. Every time. Every time. I don't understand. And I, and I still have the issue where. Like remember me, like remember oh, yeah. me. On the, I've I have to log into the launcher every single time. Yeah. Why? Remember me, please. Why does my <laughs> launcher me, have please. Alzheimer's? I don't understand. <gasps> remember me, please. Um. So the Christmas gift, they added the Sig MCX spear and chambered in a new caliber, the two 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 seven seven Fury, uh, which is cool. There's like a long barrel version. There's a suppressed version. Uh, Mossberg sent me an image. Knight, uh, he pulled one off the goons. Knight had like a short barrel version. There's also a new Sig. I think it's Sig branded one to six LPVO. Um, okay. you know how like when they added the G28, every time you find a G28, it has like the three to twelve LPVO on it. It's kind of the same thing. They added a new LPVO, but almost like for this gun. But you're gonna be able to use it on whatever gun. But it's like every time you find it, it'll have that LPVO on it. Then they added the RPD and the RPDN. I imagine the N, just like every other N in the AK series, is it has a dovetail mount or doesn't, but they essentially added the RPD, which is 762 by 39 LMG. Um, and then they updated the models and animations and like how customizable and how many parts are on SKSs. Like all the SKSs are just like updated. They look they look good. I don't use SKS as much, but um, so new guns, cool W. I don't there. We have so many guns, right? Like I'm not going to use the RPD. <laughs> Probably, and the spear looks I sick. I, I, is that like one of the CQB like end kits in Arena? I saw a clip with the RPD. Who, no, that's not in Arena. Yet. Was it? I don't remember who it was. Somebody had the PKP. Yes, Ratatouille oh, is the, the name of the kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like terrible. It looks like oh, it's terrible, awful. Yeah, it's crazy with new recoil. By the way, it's like really good, but. It's, it was awful on old recoil. Um, so, cool. Boom. W, I guess. New guns are cool. The six-beer looks sick. New caliber. Okay. Um, <clears throat> they added the achievement system, which there isn't really anything like... The achievement system is cool. I'm glad it's in the game. There really isn't any new features to it um, that we it's didn't... kicking the balls. That we didn't see. Welcome to Tarkov. Dude. Right, when I... Like you, me and Vi bitches. me and Seals, literal first raid, first raid of the entire <laughs> wipe. We were waiting on Veli, and Veli was like, "Go in." We go in. We see a PMC. We're shooting at him, and we hear tink tink. Dude throws a nade. It lands in between us. We both die to the nade and get the welcome to Tarkov achievement. I was like, "Damn, dude, brutal." I hate it. I I can respect that. I'm like that to me is the non toxic version of. Putting a claymore yes. in front of the fucking factory, uh, in front of the um, sorry, not the safe, right? Mm -hmm. Like they're both Tarkov being Tarkov and being yes. like get fucked, but one of them is like yes, shitty, and the other one's funny. Yes, I agree with all of that. Um, so yeah, the achievements cool. I I don't think there's a ton of them, but that's fine. That's this system is really easy to like flesh out as we go. So it's like. It's cool. I think I think the achievement system is cool. The Hall of Fame thing. Uh, oh, this is interesting. Uh, a new hideout zone called the Hall of Fame where you can uh, place, you can display mementos. Uh, displaying dog tags of players of the opposite faction killed by your PMC, you get a bonus to the skill leveling of your combat skills. The higher the level of the eliminated player, the greater the skill bonus. So it's kind of a cool thing. It's just... A bunch huh. of the modules have modifiers to like how fast your skills level. And so this is just like a cool way to do combat skills where it's like every time, every time you kill someone, you're like, yo, that's the highest level PMC I killed. Throw it up in the Hall of Fame and you'll get a little bonus. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, 
I'm not getting verification emails. <laughs> just the, probably like everyone else in fucking Twitch chat that complains about it. I just get nothing. Yeah. Yes. Um. Okay. I'm not going to read all this because it's a lot, bro. But the new armors in the game, the new armor hitboxes. Um, I haven't noticed any. Yeah. Um, difference. I'm trying to think. So they added new hit boxes. Um, they added like the groin. They separated everything into like front and back. So like the chest hit box now has chest front, chest back, chest side, chest left. Um, they added like a uh, they added a throat and a back neck hit box. Then they added the plates. Thirty seven plates. Some are like more universal type plates. Some are more specific to specific armors. Um, ballistic zones. A lot of the armors have soft armor. A lot of the armors serve almost like old armor was where you could put a Gen 4 and a Tac Tech on it. So a lot of the armors have plates. And then, so a, um, a trooper will have a class 4 plate in it. And underneath it is class 2 soft armor. And the soft armor is not replaceable but it is repairable. And then the plates are replaceable and repairable. Um, helmets. Now see, go ahead. I was going to say that there there's, there's two, two things about the armor system. So I've been saying forever that I thought that the armor system from what I understood it to be, which was like, yeah. we, we didn't have all the information. I was like, it's going to be massive overcomplication yeah. for exactly the same time to kill. Result, yeah. Now, so far, what I've seen and what I've heard, that kind of bears out. Although I have heard a couple <laughs> different interpretations, and I want to adjust partially. Um, there are a few cases where I feel like this new system shines. Yeah. They're theoretical cases at least in my head, I haven't experienced it yet. Yeah. But so like if you're running, right, and you get shot in the back a couple times, you whip around, now you Full can eat armor. a few more. Yep. Um, now that's going to be most relevant like early on when people have shitty Correct. ammo and stuff. But at, but at that point, I've died every raid to a headshot, to a face shot or yes. a throat shot, which m makes my armor irrelevant. Um, and the new system wouldn't do anything about that. Correct. So that's one. Two, um, uh, this is what I heard from one of my mods, uh, Overskilled. He he mentioned this, and I, I, I think it was something that like he had experienced. I hadn't considered that you would have plates with Kevlar over it. Yeah. So the idea of like you get peppered with buckshot, let's say. You don't have one big armor zone yeah. that is then getting peppered with shit, and then you kill the person, and then now it's, like, degraded. Yeah. Now you have the Kevlar eats that, and yeah. your plates are good yeah. for the later engagement. That right there was something I they hadn't talked about that I Correct. remember. No. So that was like, oh, that could be significant. To be determined <laughs> whether or not it leads to fucking, you know, when yeah. everybody's running 40-plus pen ammo all the time everywhere and or when the recoil because the recoil that we'll get into later is so good and people are just going to be hitting face shots yeah it's kind of i don't know i still feel like it's going to be irrelevant but yeah it is what it is um yeah the uh and you can't change them in the middle of a raid right you, you can't can you can't here's the They'll balance raid out here's the balance you can't change it if you're wearing the armor mm. throw the armor on the ground like Throw the armor what on the ground. You can put it in your backpack. You can put it in your backpack. But I'm saying throw the armor on the ground, and now you have another thing. You can it says pick up, or you can scroll down with your mouse wheel to modding. You can put it in your backpack and right click and do modding. But I'm just saying like it has to be off you. And what you can do is like if I wanted to insurance fraud my armor or whatever, like or you you can't carry this guy's armor. You just go to the modding thing or right click on it, and you can pull the plates out. Now once again, soft armor that Kevlar that class two you can't take out or anything that stays there. And some armors like Pacas are only Kevlar soft armor. You can't put a plate in a Paca. You have to get one that's also a plate carrier. Like, but I, somebody said today they found a class six plate in uh stash and they put it in their Karasa in the front and they were running around with a class six Karasa. Holy shit. Okay. Wait, that's going to be the new meta hiding shit in. Yeah. Okay. 
So yes. I have I have a question. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen I've seen them in the people's stashes. If if what how big is the plate two when by you two. drop it? Two by two. I mean, like on the ground. Oh, uh, I mean, you know, like some of the items you drop, like the can of beans, yeah. the can of yeah. coffee is like yeah. this big, right? Like, yeah. how big is it? Because what I'm wondering is, you know, how when you have like a stack of shit like next to a corpse, yeah. If if you have your oh, okay, before I get to what I was gonna say, the armor plates, how repairable are they? Are they like normal armor were, where it's kind of like 80, 90 percent? Yeah, and it's like affordable. It goes. It's this is where you get into it. It's what's the armor made of. It goes right back into that system. Some of them are very repairable. Some of them not very repairable. So, but if they're small visually, yeah, I can see the meta being you're standing over a body that you've just killed. Drag your shit into your backpack. Discard all the plates. No one's gonna see them on the ground. Yeah. Because they're just gonna be stacked up in the yeah. grass or whatever. No one will ever pick it up. Correct. And then you can fuck. So you we're gonna get plates back and insurance, yep. maybe potentially yes. a lot more often. Yeah, yeah, that could be huge. Yeah, I mean for insurance frauding your gear, you can you can ditch the plates and the armor in two different spots. So if someone finds the armor, you get the plates back. Like there's yeah, there's a lot. You're gonna be getting I think a lot more plates back in insurance. I I think I think you will. Um. Uh, the uh they. Uh, they removed a lot of the restrictions on what can be sold on the flea market for the armors, but then added restrictions that you can't sell level five and six plates. Does that make sense? Which was kind of a smart move by them it's because they're understanding that the system is changing. So now you can buy a Gen 4. It doesn't matter, but you just can't sell a level five or six plate on the flea. So they made that adjustment, which is good. Here's my thing, dude. This is a complicated system. It, 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 going back to what we said, I, I agreed with you. My expectation was, or no, my worry, not my expectation. My worry was that a complicated system gets more complicated and, like you said, results in the same experience. That was my fear. Um, in my experience, what's happened as, has been this, is it's it's widened. There are more scenarios where your armor can save you and feel incredibly valuable and more scenarios where you can feel like your armor did nothing for you because they've added like like the, there's an armpit hitbox where like you can get shot by a sniper scav one shot with his SVT SVD into your armpit and your armor did nothing right and you die. So there mm -hmm. are technically your throat. Um, I've been head throated a lot. So there I, are. I, I died to the throat. Like there twice are in a row. more places on your body you can get one tapped, which, in my you know, my my opinion, isn't necessarily a good thing. You know, if you want the armor to be a valuable thing to you or whatever, or it it won't have value if there are enough places where you can get one tapped. You, it's up to you to determine if there's enough. But so I'll say that there are more places you can get one tapped. You, you know, if you don't have neck armor, you can get throated. If you don't have the armpit armor, you can get armpitted. The flip side of that is in my experience of the reality of Escape from Tarkov, of like how I play the game, in my experience, it's made armor more valuable. Much more valuable. In terms of survivability? In terms of survivability. The amount of times I've gotten shot by a scav, took a bunch of damage, and literally in my head went, well, my armor's trashed, and it had two points of armor taken off because the Kevlar absorbed those buckshots. And I went, Hell yeah, dude. I heal my arms. We're back. The amount of times, literally, like you said, theoretically, it's not theoretical. The amount of times I've had a PMC shoot me in the back and I whip around and I'm I'm good. I'm chilling and I can fight this guy. So I was... Now, is that because they're using like PSO in their fucking yes. nine mil pistol? Yes, for sure. Uh, and and there's, there's two things I want to talk about that in a second. But I will say going into it, I was very famously on this podcast and on my stream very worried that this was going to result in a shorter time to kill, a more complicated armor system, and more of a reason to ignore the entire system as a whole and just follow a meta. And I will say I have been surprised and delighted that I can insurance fraud armor plates, that I can take them out in raid. But I think this is what you and me said, both said back in the day, we would like to be able to swap out armor plates in raid, but there has to be a trade-off 
because it's mm -hmm. going to be toxic if the rich can just bring in backpacks full of plates and swap them out super quick in the middle of a fight. The fact that you have to take your armor off means you have to either disengage from the fight far enough away to be put, you know, to be okay to do that, or you have to put yourself in a vulnerable position in the fight. I think that's a fairly decent trade-off. We'll see as the white progresses, but I think that's a fairly decent trade-off. So I was happy about that. Um, so I have been surprised and delighted so far that it's felt like my armor has lasted longer, saved me more times, and allowed that like doubling up of the level two Kevlar to be really valuable to me. Dude, imagine the new meta is going to be if you're like a scav with your garbage ass trash gear yeah you roll up on a chad that just dropped three dudes and he's you're sitting there looting and you see his armor just disappear because he puts it in his bag and you're like and you toss him in the back and he dies like yep. i mean hey yep yep um another thing airwing did a bunch of testing on it it seems as though if you get shot in the plate not the kevlar but in the plate and the ammo doesn't penetrate the plate you don't take blunt damage but if you get shot in the Kevlar and it doesn't penetrate the Kevlar, you do take a little bit of blunt damage. So like if you get shot in like the most armored places of you and it doesn't pen, so it, it looks like a slight nerf to blunt damage as well, which is something that I've wanted for a long time. Now, the real question is, what about aim punch and vision blur? Yeah, those are still as toxic as hell. Even in the, so there's no difference? Or? I, no perceivable difference. Uh, there, I, I engage in so much less combat early wipe that honestly, I, you know, I can't tell you with 100% certainty. But I haven't. I, I think most of the time that's their arm shots that are doing that. So it's irrelevant about the plate I stuff. Forgot. I forgot. Oh. No, I guess not irrelevant, but like, Dude. um, it's hard to tell whether or not, you I know. I forgot about this, bro. In the patch notes. Forearm hitbox zones have been reduced in diameter. They literally are attempting to nerf that. Like they, this, they like shrank the forearm hitbox a little bit. Once again, I haven't gotten to enough combat to be like, oh, sweet. It's not happening anymore. What was it before? Was it like three times the size <laughs> yeah, of a fucking like arm, this. dude? But uh, it, they, uh, they, they, the fact that they even said that means that they are recognizing that it's toxic to shoot somebody in the arms. <laughs> you know what I mean? When they're, you know, have their gun up. So that was cool that they did that. But yeah, so I'm not sure if uh, aim punch and vision blur are very affected. It hasn't perceivably been affected in my opinion, but you know what they should have done? They should have just made it like a 99% fucking penetration chance on arms. And then I don't care how big the pit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because then, then hitting someone in the arms is a bonus. Because you're hitting them yeah. twice. Yeah. It's arm chest, not yeah. just chest. Yeah. Yeah. But not just arm. Yeah. So that's interesting. Now, the 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 uh the other thing we have to talk about, it's not in the patch notes. This is very divisive, okay? So just friggin' mm -mm. don't look at chat. Mm -mm. You asked the question, is do you feel like the armor is helping you perceive uh perceiving to help you because the dude is shooting bad ammo? And I was like, Yeah, for sure, right? Because like uh, that scales a little bit. I've got class three plates. They're shooting bad ammo. If I have class five plates, they can be shooting better ammo. Have Has anyone told you about what they've done to the ammo and the ammo availability? Mm -mm. Okay. I know a lot of things like all the ammo I'm using now I've never seen before. Yes. And that's <laughs> because... I fucking app to look at the goddamn yeah. numbers that I and wish And that put. is because... Veritas... I, okay, so dude, this is just, I'm just, the Kraken is about to be released. I am not saying this is going to be a good change, okay? Let it be known. Let it be known. I'm not saying that I 100% think this is going to be a good change. What I am saying is I am excited to test this, okay? Mm -hmm. And to see where it goes. They have mm -hmm. completely decimated the ammo economy. You can't buy 5.5A1 five, five, at any level trader anymore. 5.6A1, which was on Peacekeeper level 2 last wipe, is Peacekeeper 4. It's the last good ammo you can get. 5.6A1. Okay, BP is gone. PS, level 4 proper. 7.6.2? 7.6.2. PS? PS, level 4 proper. Okay? I thought, it was, I thought it was level 2. Not anymore. Someone... No, I mean, like, I, I was asking about that. Maybe it's level three, but it's not level two. I'm level two. Huh. Yeah. 
So I don't know. Like I mean, I, PS is a fucking good round. It's a good it's round. Thirty something pen pens like it's that, a good that round. pen class four. It's a good round. Now here's the thing. Here's the thing. Oh, proper three. Okay, proper three. Sorry, not proper four. But anyways, the point I'm trying to make is it used to be like this is another step. It used to be you could buy 995 from traders and M61 from traders, right? And then like a few, and BP and they, they took those off. They they went another step and now you can't buy 55A1 from traders. You can't buy a lot of, and, and I don't know how it scales with everything like M80. I don't know where M80 is, right? Like I haven't been able to keep up because I've been trying to play the game. But... <laughs> I'm very interested to see. Oh, and then you know what else? They they didn't just remove things. Now I'm trying to give them credit here. They didn't just remove things from the traders. Uh Valiant found a 120 round box of 55A1. So they're putting it in. So they the, did exactly what we've been asking yes, them to do. Yes, for years, dude. It's Forever not just now. like it's not just like eight rounds in a stash, right? There are like boxes of good ammo in the in the game. Now, here's the thing: we've been I've been having conversations with this where people are like freaking out. Here's the real question: This change is a big fat L if there's just some random reach level fifty two. And then unlock this quest where you shoot 100 scabs in the face and you unlock 55A1. They keep doing this. I think two or three separate times now, they've taken BP off the traders and then they just put it behind a super high level quest. In my opinion, that's an L. I know all the chads are going to come at me because they're going to be like, well, we play a lot. We should be rewarded for playing a lot. And my opinion of that is your reward for playing a lot is that you have more BP that you've found. Yeah. Because you're playing the game. If you take all the good ammos off and then just put them at high level quests, you have not changed the access of those ammos to the chads. You've only changed it for the new players and the people that play more casually. And in my opinion, that kind of sucks, right? Yeah, and there and there's and there's also a result here that depending on the availability because this is something you have to get right. Here's a world that we can live in. You get a situation where part of the armor hit zones and the and the recoil part of like the w in that equation yeah is low level people have a chance again yes to be able to take like like all of my old school videos where i'm like one tapping dudes with like you know kivers because there was no like face hitbox yeah uh you know or or uh I think I mixed up bar of that. But no, basically, yeah, I, like, get you. I would go on scav runs and I would just be killing the fucking fast MT4 dudes with yeah. scav garbage. Yeah. Um Okay, so but you can flip that on its side. Yeah. On its head? I don't know. I'm I'm you like flip high it. right now. Um imagine a world where the chads have gotten to the point where they can have level three probably level four or five and up yeah. armor on every inch of their body. Yeah. New players have access to, they either have to find the stuff and extract with it, which they're not going to, they're, they're anything yeah. like me, they're going to die every fucking raid and yeah. they're not going to be able to come out with massive boxes full of ammo. Yeah. And they won't be able to buy something like PS, which in my opinion was like kind of an equalizer. Yeah. And instead they're going to just be, they're not going to be hitting the neck shots or the yeah. armpit shots because the other guys will have the guns that are modded for ergo yeah. with a fucking for LPVO sure. Sure. and they're going to see them and they're going to go well, pat, one tap yeah, or full auto without the recoil and they're going to spray down the Timmies and the Timmies are just going to get melted. So there's a world in which I agree. now there's a, there's a gate where you can't compete anymore. I agree. Which is why I've said, which is why I said at the beginning of this, I'm not saying this is a good change. All I'm saying is that we've said many times that we feel like giving players infinite and unlimited access to the best ammo kind of just makes armor useless, right? Now, I'm not like, I, I don't even think you're being devil's advocate. I agree. If they change, if they take the ammo away, th you, we have to consider there's a world where, okay, well, the gate isn't now that the chads have ammo that you don't have the gate is if the chads have armor that you can't pen right like so so i i get that th that there's value there but what i'm just saying is that like man 
I've they've and they've infinite and unlimited access. They they do the trader. Oh my god, you can only buy 90 rounds, but if you play all the time, you're just camping the traders every time and then you have like 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 you know, you can only buy 90 rounds of 55A1. I never had less than 2000 rounds, right? And I used M4s all the time because I just play enough. So that wasn't a valuable gate in my opinion, right? Because like it still just made it so everybody so the 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 seeing how this plays out definitely de is determined by do they end up just giving this ammo back to the chads and if so that's going to make me very sad right and then secondly what do they do at the top end with armor and plates what we haven't yet seen is did they also change the availability of class 5 and 6 armors yeah or class 5 and 6 plates which that could also freaking um that could also kind of like change the balance of everything as well. And then the other thing, the other thing that goes back to it being the great equalizer is ammo can always be put in a secure container, right? So like you might find 120 rounds of 5.5A1. If you play Tarkov a few hours a week and you never get to level 40, you maybe never had the ability to purchase 5.5A1, right? For, for USD, yeah. which means you would never have it. By them removing it from the traders and putting it in the raid, now you might find it. If you find it, you can put it in your secure container. And if you put it in your secure container, you can bring it in your ADAR with 10 round mags. And that could be the great equalizer. Where yeah. now you can go through any helmet. And does that make sense? So yeah, Absolutely. It, it really depends but on it really depends. availability, accessibility, and, and, and armor. And, and from a from a practical standpoint, how likely is it that given the availability of ammo that you will have that ammo loaded into a gun that you can accurately yeah. shoot at a PMC who is yeah. geared. Yeah. There's a world in which this completely equalizes everything. Yeah. We were right all along and fucking it's amazing. There's a world in which nothing changes. It's just yeah. a different flavor of the same Correct. thing. Correct. And see like what and the things that we've talked about, like in our preemptive defense, the things we've talked about have been so high level yeah. and generalized that they can do what we said and have it still be yeah. fucking bad. Just depends on how they do it. And we don't I don't even have to we don't even have to come to our own defense for that because we've always said that. We yeah. talk about it at a high level. If they're actually going to implement it in the game, it demands a more nuanced take on it, right? Like you know what I mean? It needs to be done right. It 100%. all depends on the availability. It depends on the, yeah. But my opinion has always been that I don't like, I think that my value of a, being a guy that plays a lot should come from finding more things than you in the raid, in, in the raid. If I have 5,000, 5, 5, a one, I want it to be to, because I found those in the raid, not just because I camped a trader that you can't camp. Because if yep. I had to five those 5,000 rounds of 5.5A1 five, five, in the raid, that meant you could have gotten there before me and shoved it up your butt, or you could have killed me while I was trying to loot it, as opposed to, I'm at no risk when I'm just camping Peacekeeper resets. I'm at no risk. So if you have 5,000 rounds of 5.5A1 five, five, in this economy, that you go, that guy's good. He survives a lot of raids. He knows where the ammo spawns. He's playing the video game. And what I think yep. that does is I think it at least attempts at putting more power into the more casual people because they can find that if they get a good spawn. They can load it into their ADAR and one tap and X fill helmet, and then they might have access to some better gear. It, like you said, Absolutely. skill is definitely going to still come into the game. Nobody wants a game where like, if I, you know, nobody wants a game where it's just a 50-50 shot. You know, I shoot you in the head first, 50-50, I win, and then you shoot me in the head. It's like, you might beat people that are more skilled at you, but it's not going to feel good when you shoot people in the head. So it's like, of course, skill is always going to come into the playing. But I've I've liked pushing it more in favor of the more casual people. I've said for years now, the more stuff we put into a raid and off of the traders equalizes things a little bit because I don't have unrestricted access and access with no risk. And you, the more casual player, had no access before, and now you have access. And that feels like, it, you know... It, it always feels like what we're talking about is trying to figure out a way to like, you know, hurt the chads, but buff the casuals. And this feels like that to me. Now, once again, I understand the argument from the more veterans, from the chads of like, well, I play more. I should be rewarded. I just think that that I think our perception of what being rewarded is is skewed. 
because the the traders have been so fleshed out with all this stuff, our perception of being rewarded is I can buy anything I want anytime I want. And I don't like that as a reward for me playing because then no. everything loses all value. I still want to yeah. be in there four months into a wipe and be like, oh, I found a class six plate or I found a you know a box 125 5A1. I still want that to feel good. And so that to me feels like it gives more of the video game for the casual to play and then keeps for the Chad, the risk and the rush of the game longer. Yeah. Um, well, like we'll, we'll have to see how it plays out and we'll also have to see what they have for crafts at all the various levels because that's if you can such just, a good point if you can just fucking craft five the five ammo, a one it yes then then there's a, effectively right and this this is what i was talking about with the supply right yeah there's if if in three hours you can craft like a hundred rounds yeah. of you know nine nine five Every raid, you're going to die to 995 because everybody Correct. is going to, they're only going to run the M4 when they get the 995 that they crafted. Yeah, so, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, yeah, yeah, they, yeah. There, there's a uh, artificial scarcity. Yes. Or like a faux scarcity in yes. that, like, so it, it depends, right? It depends I'm on crossing the, my fingers. We'll me see. Too. It depends on the armor. It depends on the ammo. It depends on the late game quest. It depends on a lot of things. But here's the thing. And here's kind of, and this is the point you were getting to earlier when you were like in our preemptive defense. This isn't going to be perfect, but it means so much to me that we're attempting to move the needle as opposed to just like the, all the needle movements. And this is what you were just saying. All the previous needle movements have been fake ones where it's like, oh, well, you can only buy 90 rounds now. It's like that doesn't effectively do anything. The chads still have all the ammo and the casuals have none of the ammo. Like, oh, well, you can't put it on the flea market anymore. I still had 5,000 rounds of 5.5A1 and the casuals still had no rounds of 5.5A1. So the fact that <coughs> we're finally making a change that is actually affecting everybody in the game I don't think it's going to be perfect. It's probably going to have flaws. We're probably going to poke fun and make fun at it. But I'm so happy. I mean, I would, I'm would. i going to be so happy they did this, even if everybody agrees three months from now it's terrible and they revert everything back. Everybody tells me all the time, games in beta, games in beta. Let's do some beta shit. Like, let's try some things and see if it works. You know what I mean? Yep. So I'm excited. I, it's real. The ammo is really divisive. People are really, really... Um, unsure about it but i'm excited that we're trying something man can can we can we real quick like interrupt to what the the flow we were on and just say yeah. for the last fucking two years you know however long we've been doing this goddamn podcast we have been let me step back can we we should establish that this is one of the most well-received wipes i can remember People agreed. are happy. People are agreed. Other than all of the bullshit outside of the game, yes. In terms of gameplay, I think it's safe to say that people are really happy, right? Yeah. We have been for a couple of years harping on giving your character more movement, not having <sighs> bullshit with stamina, talking about the availability of ammo, talking about the availability of armor, talking about how the recoil needs to be done, yeah. blah, all of the... And literally everything they did are the things we Dude. were saying, like begging them to do that people were fighting back against. And wow, wouldn't you know it? <laughs> Everybody fucking loves it. Wow, it's incredible. It's, it's just just like crazy. My, just like after my fucking recoil, you know, oh, the video. going in the right direction. And then they made a change and it was like everybody unanimously. It was yep. the one time everybody, the, it, it was the World War II, the Germans and the fucking, <laughs> uh, you know, the, the, the allies sitting there singing fucking Kumbaya on Christmas, right? The ceasefire, everybody was for, yeah. for like a week for like and then they reverted a bunch of shit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then they, and then they walked it back and then it, it went back into AIDS mode. Yeah. Can I just say that feels good? Yeah, it feels good to be to a gangster. That. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, oh, was it World War One? Okay, my bad. <laughs> um, oh, no, what happened here? Oh, the other thing. The only other thing with the ammo is w one of the things they need to do is they need to now adjust the loot pool of what scavs can have, AI and players. So like 
now LPS for the Mosin, right? That used to be the level one garbage ammo. That's some of the best ammo you can buy from the traders, yeah. even maxed out. You can spawn as a player scav with LPS. Wait, you can spawn as a player scav? Yeah. <laughs> Damn, what? Crazy. Yeah. I, 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 I wouldn't know. Yeah. Or or the sniper scav with an SVD can can have SNB. Yeah. Yeah. You can yeah. Ve Vepper Hunter AI or player scavs M80. So it's like they should, they should spawn in with like 20 rounds of LPS yeah. and then everything else be trash. Like, yeah, mix it up a little I don't, bit. So. So, yeah, I'm not saying we should go all the way back. I like the concept of like I remember when they added the like. So how rare you find an ADAR scab with 55A1 is how rare I think LPS M80 SNB should be like because it being very rare but plausible means you might want to stay in raid and you want to loot your scav kills. Right. Because they could have good ammo. But right now it's really common because last yeah. wipe, you know, those weren't crazy ammos. So they need to go back with that. Like, you know, 762 PS, right, is is, is a top tier ammo now. I have 500 rounds of it because you just kill a scav and he's always has it. So they need to put, you know, the T45s, the HPs on those things. And then that has the double whammy of like it making helping with the ammo economy and making it so you die little scavs less frequently because they have worse ammo. So that's a win, too. Um so that's the last thing. So that's, dude, that's a, it's, it's a big, long, complicated topic. The armor hitboxes, dude, I literally, half of the entire patch notes almost are them like breaking down the ammo thing. It's complicated. I still don't understand a lot of it. There are plates that are for specific armors. There are universal plates. I haven't done a whole lot of plate swapping in raid. Like you said, we have to see how the ammo economy is. We have to see how the recoil goes as we get more moddable guns. It's really hard to determine how the time to kill is going to flesh out, but I've been pleasantly surprised at the armor hitboxes at the, uh, okay, not at the hitboxes. I think I just hate the hitboxes. <laughs> I've been pleasantly surprised by the armor change. And I think, and my early opinions of the ammo changes are that I like them. Now, <clears throat> before we move on, because there's more to talk about, we got a blaze through it because there's arena stuff to talk about and stuff. I do want to take a second and thank the sponsor of this episode, and that is Factor. With the busy fall season already in swing, you might be looking for some wholesome, convenient meals. Uh, Factor is America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, which can help you fuel up fast for breakfast, lunch, or dinner with chef-prepared, dietitian approved ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Uh, Factor is awesome. You know, we dude. We I've been. I I'm not a huge breakfast guy. But whenever when I discovered their their breakfast, dude. Oh yeah, oh my god, holy crap! Waifu making uh, the, uh, the I had the gingerbread spiced pancakes. Oh shoot! Oh my god, dude! And they got apple cinnamon pan. I mean, I I love pancakes. I'm a pancake yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, there's just so much, so much good stuff. Uh, and being able to like, either if my wife makes it or, you know, I'm lazy in the morning. So being able to just make it yep. super fast, super quick. Super I don't fast. have to mess around with pots and pans. Just and heat the, it up yeah. and eat it. Yeah, Oof. we we talk about that all the time. I mean, I've been in here freaking gaming 12 hours a day and really I've been spending $60 a day on DoorDash and stuff because I just don't have any food. So like when when we have Factor, when it's there, it's so nice that it's, it's going to be good. It's good portion. And it's literally all you have to do is heat it up and eat it. Uh, they have all sorts of like seasonal flavors. They've got pecan chicken, apple Dijon pork chops, all sorts of stuff. Uh, ready in two minutes. They have um, the convenience factor is a huge thing. You can choose options that are 550 calories per serving. Uh, calorie smart options. You can choose what type of food you want. You can choose how many meals you want a week. You can choose. You can take a week off and then hop back on. It's not like super. It's not like quitting the gym. You can be like, oh, I'm going to be out of town. Boom, skip this week. Super simple. Super convenient. Uh, consumer choice is always awesome. And so, uh, it's uh, it's cool, man. It's cool. And uh, we love it and we've used it a lot. So you can head to factormeals.com slash podcast 50 and use code podcast 50 to get 50% off. That is code podcast 50 at factormeals.com slash podcast 50 to get 50% off. Thank you so much to Factor for sponsoring this episode. Mm. Mm. <clears throat> okay. Uh, dude, let's talk about the next thing on the patch notes. Vaulting. It's so good. 
It's so good. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's been nice. Uh, in, it was a massive letdown in arena because there's nothing to vault on. I was wondering about that. I like, was like all of those that. boxes that like there have been times where you jump from something where high and you go to jump on a box and there's like an invisible wall. Mm-hmm. As far as I can tell, none of those maybe they're hopefully they remove them. But then if they do, well, now there's like 97 more like snipe spots and angles and stuff that mm-hmm. they have to like adjust for. So it was kind of a let down in that arena. That kind of makes sense. That kind of makes sense. Um, but in the main game itself, yeah, it's, it's been phenomenal. It's been really smooth. And I, I was Ugh. assuming it was going to be awkward. Like if there's one of those little fences and you're running at like a kind of a shallow angle, I'm like, there's no way it's going to They just go right over it. I'm like, oh, fuck. Like it was pretty nice. Yeah. I haven't really had many issues with it, dude. So they break it up into two things, and I'm glad they do because I actually like one more than the other. The climbing, which is just I climb up onto a thing and I'm up here now. And vaulting, which is I vaulted over a thing, you know, out a window, over a fence. Vaulting is S plus tier. Vaulting is the one of the most impactful and one of the best implemented changes in this video game of all time. I'll stand by that. I've played 40 hours in the past three days. The amount of fences on Streets of Tarkov or on Customs or something where you need, literally, you need level 28 strength to jump over it. Bloop, 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 yeah. You vault over it. I've got a car battery on me. I got to walk all the way down here, get around the fence, walk all the way back or try to jump and throw my backpack over. Vault over. Vaulting, yeah. the vaulting side of that is so so unbelievably good it's so quick you can vault out of uh in in the ets you couldn't vault in or out in any of the windows and dorms it made me so mad they fixed it you can vault out of all the windows and dorms all this stuff uh if it's a window you have to break the window and then you can vault out i wish you could like vault and it would break the window but you have to break the window first like like PUBG back in the day yeah, was yeah. so satisfying so like the vaulting is so clean it's so usable it's so quick and it's so like, um, it, dude, it, it, I, uh, people are gonna think I'm being dramatic. It changes how I traverse the maps. It's just like you can just vault over stuff and it's so fast and it's so nice. And then climbing, climbing is a little bit more awkward. Okay. Yeah, it's slow. It's a little bit gonna, slower. I'm, it feels like opening a door back in the day where it's just like, yeah. the heavier you are, the slower the climb, too. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, Um, and that's the one where like, I've been, so like you can be in a full sprint and vault over something, but if you're in a full sprint, you won't climb. You have to, so I've tried to do that where I run and then I run into the thing and then I stop and then I climb. So I have to get, uh, I have to get in the thing of you, when you're running up to something, you let go of shift, you start walking, then you hit the thing and you'll climb right up. You can make it smooth, but it was a little bit clunky at first. The biggest W of climbing of all time, dude, is it consumes arm stamina, not leg stamina. Yeah, that's massive. Oh, I don't think you can do it if your leg stamina is in the red. Like, I don't think you like I think you have to have green leg stamina in order to do it. But it takes arm stamina. I think that's such a W. Uh, It's quiet, too. Somebody just brought up. It's not like like when you're climbing up onto a thing and you make a bunch of noise. It's so valuable, dude. It's so nice. The climbing, the climbing up onto things, you can climb up onto things that you can't jump onto with level 51 strength, which once again makes traversing the map and interacting with it. The fact that as a level one PMC, I can climb up onto a ledge that I couldn't jump onto as a level 50. It just is so good, dude. I... I was super excited about it going into it and it exceeded my expectations. It's good. The only thing is uh, I actually moved the vault button off of spacebar and put it on V. I moved my melee because I never used my melee um, because <laughs> what I hated, vaulting feels really good on space. The only thing is I hated that in order to have two binds on the same key, one of them has to be set to the release and I hated jumping, having a delay. You know how when there's two binds on it? Oh my God, I couldn't handle that. So I had to pull vaulting off so that I could put jump on press. 
And now I have to kind of work my brain to vault when I want to vault. But it's going to be so much better because I know when I want to jump and I can jump and there's no delay. And then when I want to vault, I can vault. And uh, it's been it's been pretty nice. Interesting. I got to look at what the defaults are because like I just kind of have been like. It's been a little clunky. Yeah, but like both jumping and climbing have been a little bit. And it might be that I thought that the binds are like backwards. Like, yeah, it, like maybe the jumping is the by default. Is it on release space jump? Now it is, yeah. It oh. didn't used to be. It used to be on press. So when you press jump, yeah, people were saying, uh, so people were complaining, and there, I think their complaints like poisoned because yeah. I was under the impression that that jump was on press still, and that like you had to hold space to climb, like it was on continuous. So correct, uh, climb is on continuous, but jump is on release. Wait, so then what's on press? Nothing. Why? Because you can't have an action on press and another action on continuous. Because if I have something on press, as oh. soon as I actuate it down, it completes the action. So it, it doesn't know to look for anything. You So that's the thing. In the Tarkov controls... There's not, there's not a continuous timeout. There's a correct, double click timeout. Correct. All right. So, so jump is on... Oh, awkward. Yeah, so jump is on release ah. now. So I moved vaults to V because my thumb, the way my thumb hits the spacebar, I hit with my thumb knuckle pretty much, not the tip. So my literally I rest the tip of my thumb on V, basically normally. So I have vault on V and then jump on space, and it's much better. Um, it's much better top because v. because top v, because I have more control over it. But like the fattest, hugest, girthiest. W. Vaniest. Vaniest W of all time, dude, is freaking vaulting. I love it so much in this game. And that's coming from when they, dude, a year ago, somebody was like, you think they're adding vaulting? I would go, ha, ha, ha. No, that would be awful. I said, I'm sure I said something along the lines of like, I will sell my house, donate it to Twitch chat <laughs> if they ever had vaulting. LOL, you're all brain dead. I'm dude, sure I said I something along those lines. Yeah. So, like, coming from that, and now I think it's, like, one of the biggest dubs of all time. So, um, next thing yeah, is no. uh, the shoulder swap, the ability to swap from uh, your left, uh, from your right to your left shoulder. Have you tried that at all? Oh, I have been using it a fuck ton in Arena, and it's... It's... Beautiful, in my opinion. It is... There's a couple things. Um, most of the time... It feels really smooth when you like go around a corner, swap, you can swap, almost kind of get to a rhythm. Yep, yep, yep. And um, although with some guns and some optics, it's like busted. So yeah. I've been on, I finally made it to the, okay, I was totally wrong, by the way. I'm on the G28 and or TX in the marksman oh, tree. okay, in arena? Yep, the TX, I was like, this is going to be God tier. It's actually not amazing because SSAAP just like does like 30 something damage. Yes. Yeah. The G28, even though it has the ACOG, which is, I like it a lot, but it's a little clunky yeah. for like mid range, you know, whatever. Yep. Um, the G28 kit is fucking rad. Dude, I literally see the Alton guy pop in the head. He's down. It's like, yes. Yeah. It yeah, feels, yeah. It feels so good. And what's good about that, uh, we, I probably shouldn't talk about this just yet, um, but it has the contact fours oh, and yeah. it has good meds, whereas the TX kit has Sordans and it has a Grizzly. And it's like, I don't have four years I in an arena that. match. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I get I get a break and three heavy bleeds and it's like, see you guys in fucking April. You know what yep. I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, when I'm trying to clutch a 1v3. Um, yep. So unfortunately, yeah, that kit shooting water balloons doesn't doesn't yeah. really it's shooting like it's shooting like hornets it just feels like it pisses people off yeah. um but the g28 kit first of all when you shoulder and you ads it's it, it oh. some of the scopes is like real nice it's like old voodoo that's yeah, like full yeah. screen but with the g with the the acog on the g28 your head is like in the fucking housing gotcha. so it like Depending on how your arms are moving, you see like the housing like kind of glitching out a little bit. Interesting. So it's a little distracting and a little janky. And then also like the fucking there's some awkwardness around like you go to a corner and it like sometimes it un it like switches automatically if you like walk into a corner. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, that's my thing is 
Uh, I like the way they implemented it because they did make some concessions, but in the name of fluidity, which I think the game needs. But one of those concessions is they didn't want to reanimate anything, right? So yeah. anytime your gun needs to go into an animation, it switches back. And one of those animations is, um, what's it called? When you butt up to a wall. Mm-hmm. So if you get too close to a wall, it switches to your right and then butts up. And then when you back which is, up, which is like 98% right of the time back. you want to swap is when you're going to get close, close to, a to wall. cover. Yes. Um, so that's been the only downside for me. If there's one animation I'd like them to go back and do, it's just that. I just wish we could get wall pushed. I don't freaking know what it's called on a left shoulder. That's the only thing for me because everything else, like if you reload, he'll pull it to the right side and do that. Or if you take an optic off, that's fine. I'm cool with that. But, but just the being pushed up into the wall that you feel like you're in a circle because <laughs> can you back up and you're like doing this weird thing? Uh, that's a little weird. Yeah. But overall, I, I, I really like it. Um, I think it feels good when it's not a little janky because of, so, there's an infinite combination of, yeah, you know things. Oh, I got this. Actually, something that I I gotta make sure we talk about that is mega broken, and it's actually like super concerning. I gotta make okay. sure we talk about. It. Okay. Um. So uh, so I think overall, left shoulder shooting is really nice as well. I think uh, it feels really good. It feels really good. Like, not only to hold an angle, that's where a lot of people are thinking, like, you hold an angle, it's so much tighter, me and Seal did a back and forth, where, like, uh, I had him on the right shoulder, I was like, okay, how tight can you peek this angle and still see me, and then I switch, and I took screenshots, and it was, like, a really difference. You know what else feels really good, though? Walking up to an angle pre-left side on a point fire. Like, if you're pre-firing around a left corner, just being able to reach around that corner and pre-fire someone as you're pushing... In a point fire stance feels well, mean, that's, bro. To me, that's the point of it. Yeah. And and I, I recognize that it's better to swap and then ADS when you're left holding yeah. the left angle. But to me, it doesn't feel any different because it doesn't look any different. Correct. It doesn't look any different so from your like, perspective. I, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. I'm just kind of like assuming I'm less bad than before, but without yeah. ever knowing, without ever yeah. knowing... You know what I mean? Correct. But you actually get a super tangible benefit when your yes. fucking muzzle is not blocked and, and yep. like yep. it's huge. It's so nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh so that was a W. That was a W. I think they could uh yeah, just make it so when I butt up to a wall, it stays on my left shoulder. But other than that, huge W. Huge W. Um uh they uh added the they added the ammo loading preset, <clears throat> which I don't think I'll ever use. I saw that. I'm like, wow, this is so complicated. But it's when, really cool, in my opinion. It's so cool. When people were talking about, like, I really want to be able to customize, I'm like, you recognize they're going to have to have this crazy, intricate fucking UI to get this thing? And, and they, then they do. did. And it's like, what? there's so many other UIs I wish that they would implement that I would, yeah. just, I, I would just say... I want to recommend they do this, but they never would because it's so complicated. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I like I wish they spent that much time on, like, your fucking squad UI. Or the quick in, like, selfie. Arena, sure. Or the quick selfie. Yeah. Or a million other things that yeah, a million yeah. people use a million times a day. But I, it's cool. I'm not going to poo-poo them. Exactly. That's where I'm at. It's like, I agree. I would have loved that time given <laughs> to one of those features that would increase quality of life. But... I looked at it and I was like, wow. I was like, this is sick. If you want to do that, if you want to this many rounds on the bottom, you want tracers at the bottom so you know you're almost out of ammo. If you want like high pen up front and high damage on, uh, down below, like they really thought about how you would interact with that. And if you mess up being able to just like swap, like I was like, damn, this is cool. I don't think I'll ever use it, but W. Like like it. it's a net positive for the world because if you're interested in it, that's sick. I didn't use the preset system a single time last wipe. I'm glad it's in the game, but like, wait, just wait. This it, this is going to be the new rain <laughs> dance that the community does, where it's like, bro, 
ever since I st stacked my mags oh, in this yeah. fucking very I started winning fights when it was like actually the recoil and the hitboxes. Yeah, yeah. Right? Like or like remember when people were like if you put one of every ammo in your mag you would cause the server to stutter so people were like loading one at a time. And now all now all stutters are going to be blamed on that, you Yeah, know, and, yeah, yeah. That was funny. Okay, next thing, the biggest thing, dude, the new recoil. How you feeling about it? I mean, listen, I was right. I've always been right. <laughs> I've, ne I've never, I've never not. I've been never right. been wrong in my entire life, dude. dude w, I, fat, girthy, veiny W. Yeah, in arena, dude. I was like, I was fucking. As long as I wasn't playing against, you know, like five gods, yeah. uh, way more geared than me. I was just fucking owning. I was one v fouring. I got like five clutches yesterday. Yeah. Yesterday, I was like, "This is the first time I've had a day of Tarkov where it's an all fun." Oh wow! Like there That's was crazy. there was like one or two games that were a little aidsy, but it was yeah. frustrating for like other reasons. The gameplay, I felt like fucking old me, two thousand eight, two thousand nineteen. <laughs> It was fantastic, especially yeah. now that I have the contact fours too, because I can actually hear and I have good ammo and I can do the G28. It's just like, dude, it's not like yep. anymore. Yeah, oh, it's so sweet. Now, here's the thing. <laughs> um, I, I completely agree. I think it's so good. Did you see my tweet? Uh, it was it was an excerpt pulled from my video on the recoil. I recorded. I had a I have an alt account where I do challenges sometimes. I reset the alt account. So in level one, I bought every gun I could buy. I bought the Keter. I bought the SKS. I bought an AK-74U. I bought an M4. And I recorded all the old recoil level one level you know level zero skills. And then I did oh, that. I saw the video. And then I did that on wipe day. And then yeah. okay, so what my tweet yeah, was I, I remember I was I, I had the idea and you're like <laughs> Oh yes <laughs> and I was like You were like gotcha. somebody really should record. I was like <laughs> shut the fuck up. Uh, yeah, I was I was literally waiting for you to do the video because yeah. that. So the tweet was just an excerpt from that end where it was the the side by side comparison of a few of the guns. Dude, that tweet went viral, like for me. Fifty nine thousand views. Yes. And dude, and some of the most common comments. Don't read them because the freaking negative ones go to the top and they fry your brain. Uh, constant. I had like 300 quote tweets. Everything's going to be laser beams. This is what yeah. this is what the community wanted to avoid, dude. It's just going to be back to the thing. And then all the streamers are going to clock and complain. And it's just going to be yes. the fucking. Uh... Exactly. But the most common, the most common quotes we or like response was like, I didn't realize how bad it was. And that was so vindicating because. Because, because going into it, the people that were apprehensive about a new recoil system were apprehensive for that reason. They were like, I don't want all the guns in the game to be laser beams. And in my head, I'm like, if you could only see a side-by-side -side comparison of what I'm talking about, what I want, and what we have, I feel like you would change your mind. And the amount of people that were like, holy Christ, it was so bad before, I didn't realize because you can see the difference it's just like i can understand i can i can give empathy and try to get down to the kernel the nugget of truth of like people who are saying okay i'm worried that all the guns are going to be too laser beamy now we're going to talk about that in a second and 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 while i you know you know potentially disagree i can i can understand that what i can understand is if you can watch that video and defend the old recoil system if you are concerned that the new real coil system may have some issues, that I can get behind. But how could anybody call this game realistic with that recoil system? Like, it was atrocious, dude. It just, like, it really showed how much... What I love about the new system is how many of the guns you can feel a backward motion. And not the, like, I don't have a shoulder, you know, my gun, my hands just do this. Um... So, like I was saying two weeks ago after coming back from Texas. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. Like I was saying when I got back from Brownells. Like you know, we've all been. Everyone has ever shot a gun, and I once again, I truly don't care about realism either. But as a gameplay mechanic, how recoil realistically functions is valuable, right? Like you know, 
That's why mm -hmm. every game ever <laughs> has made their guns that way. So the side-by-side, -side, I think, really helped a lot of people see, specifically with semi-auto and burst firing, um, how how much better it is now on, on all the guns. And it's so nice. And it's so nice. And then full auto, we were, I was having a conversation with somebody. I was having a good faith conversation with somebody earlier today about the like, man, impossible. Yeah. He was like in a few months, it's going to be full auto meta. It's going to be all these, you know, you know, the guns are going to have all the good attachments. And, you know, I, I, I don't think it's going to change. And, I was having a good faith conversation and I was like, what I feel like a lot of the people that are hating on the new recoil are missing is that they're not at all shooting the new guns, the new way in full auto. They're seeing semi-auto taps and they're comparing it to the old full auto recoil. And they're like, wow, everything's a laser beam now. ARs and above. So like an AKM, an M4, a, uh, a 308 MDR are really hard to control at full auto right now if your target's like 20 meters away. Close quarters, right, spray and pray, always. 20 to 20 to 40 meters away, it's really hard to control. You get the complete opposite of what we had. You get five or six shots that are really accurate. And then you get some pretty gnarly horizontal shake. And if your target is far enough away that like that, like, it's actually hard to control. I haven't, I haven't tried that. I'm going to do that in offline right Dude, now. Dude, yeah, pick, you know, pick something 24, like get like a, an AKM or something. The M4 is actually pretty nice, but like get like an AKM or, or an AK-74UB. It feels like it should be. Like the longer you're, now, the, the good faith conversation is this all is under the umbrella of we actually do have to wait and see what the meta attachments are like, right? If I get like a meta M4 and it reduces all that horizontal recoil and it's a it's a laser beam, I'm not going to want that either. Like, I don't think anybody, including the people that are celebrating the new recoil system, want level 50 chads to have guns that have no recoil at any distance. I okay, wait, hated wait, wait. the old HK. Where so here's here's the thing that everybody seems to forget. Yeah. There was always some amount of guns in the game that sure that had no recoil yeah it just so there has happened. never been not yeah. that <laughs> yeah so so when people are like i don't want laser beams or we or we have laser beams what yeah. what they're saying is i only want the level 59 dudes who spend a million rubles every raid building the same one of three meta guns yeah. to have laser beam recoil and everybody else has fake arms exactly. exactly stuck on with chewing gum exactly shooting guns for the first time in their entire life exactly there have always so, been laser so beams i would rather have all of the guns for everybody be shootable yeah and be and be controllable yeah. than only a subset Yep. So if if they're arguing against laser beams, then okay, then they then nothing should be a laser beam. Yeah. And everything like the only coherent argument I've heard that I disagree partially with. Yeah. For practical reasons, because I don't want BSG to fucking change anything because it's good now, and I'm just afraid that yeah, if they change anything, yeah. it'll just be fucking bad again. Like yeah. it was, you know. But um, was Desmond basically saying? I think he wants kind of like what not Modern Warfare 3, whatever the one before that I that had DMZ that yeah, I played that I was going to do a recall video on at the time, but then just like, fuck it, um, where that has a decent amount of recoil, but it's predictable. Yeah, it doesn't have a pattern. So you're just constantly pulling down yes. or like constantly pulling down into the right. So you have to work for it, yeah. but it's at least masterable and controllable. He would he wants that. Yeah. Um, we what we have now is is closer to that than what we used to have, but it's not there. If you and that's yeah. what I did because in in all of my testings the, what, that I did the side by side video, I didn't want any, I didn't control the mouse at all. So with all the guns and the new recoil, I held it the one I just pressed mouse one, and all of the guns have a much higher vertical climb. Like okay, not much higher. It used to be shot one, shot two, shot three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen. Okay. Now yep. it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And then 
then it just sits here. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So I agree with Desmond. I wouldn't mind that. I think it would cre create a skill gap and also creates uh, a less reliance on full auto. I, I agree with that. If it just kept climbing, but Nikita has made it super clear that they're not getting rid of the PMC compensation. <laughs> I agree with that take, but they're not going to get rid of that. But, um, but, uh, man, what was I saying? So, so like, it depends on how the attachments work, right? But the guns that I'm using right now aren't people see, dude, they, oh, yeah, they just see me semi-tap. They see me go bop, 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 bop. They're like laser beams. And I'm like, dude, flip it to full auto. And let me try and shoot this guy. And I'm like, blah, 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 blah. like, this is the point. I would yeah. want to conserve my ammo and use more accurate shots. This is better. Like it. So, yeah. and, and when you see two PMCs running, zigzagging like this, and you have a, a Saiga, right? And yeah. you're like, it's it might even is maybe a laser beam and yet i'm still missing half the shots because trying to fucking track someone yeah with the janky ass yeah. movement and whatever try com combine that with terrible hit code uh hit code hit reg yeah net, net code, code. code the fucking jank ass yeah. running back and forth movement jumping whatever and rng recoil that's a lot harder to control and you're just gonna get shit on right yeah. now everybody can compete if they can put their mouse on a head yeah. and adjust a little bit, yeah, which is what it should be. You're already fighting against eight billion things in Escape from Tarkov. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They 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 need to remove the RNG and they have, yeah. or at least reduce it to the point where it's it's not a manageable amount of RNG. Yeah, yeah. where the RNG Literally isn't the deciding factor in every fight. Yesterday, I never once complained about weapon handling. Yeah. Whenever I died, because it just never felt like yeah. it was always I'm whiffing, I'm whiffing. Yeah, yeah, it yeah, wasn't, yeah. It wasn't. Where are my bullets going? What the fuck is my character doing? Yeah, and, and that's a and that's a a not toxic way to correct. lose. Correct. To yeah, correct. I agree. I want to whiff. I want to whiff, or I want to be like, damn, nice shot to that <laughs> yeah. guy, right? Um, and so and, and I also think it's relatively balanced in that like the MP5 is pretty laser beamy but it's shooting nine mil, right? So it's like, yeah. that's relatively, especially if I can't buy PVP or anything, like I think it, it feels to me so far that the steps up actually affect full auto performance. SMGs are pretty easy to control in full auto. Yep. ARs are relatively <laughs> easy to control in full auto. And I haven't used many bigger guns, but at least in the ETS, the larger guns were kind of hard to control in full auto. I'm in I'm in offline mode and I have two guns. I have an M4 stock. Yeah. And I have I I killed a dude who was fucking pretty geared out and he had an AK twelve. Oh, okay. It, it literally just has I don't know what is even stock on this. It just I think it just has like a foregrip, basically. Yeah. Um the AK twelve actually feels fucking incredible. Yeah. Um the, the M4 is like and, and it has like and the kind of like whoa, starts whoa, doing which, the wiggle, yeah. Which I feel like is it doesn't feel it doesn't i won't say it's realistic but it doesn't feel unrealistic yes yeah 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 um it feels really good to be able to go bruh, 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 and have yes. that be fucking yes like, it, it feels great I, the yes. first raid i did was the mp5 put it in burst mode Dude. in factory iron Hot. sights and just going bruh, 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 dropping people running from fucking 30 meters away like because i'm Hot. hitting headshots yeah it felt fucking fantastic now the ak-12 um, yeah, it, it, all it has is a fucking dot on top and a grip and it has, it has enough like, yeah, where if, if someone's far away and they're a small little guy on your screen, you can't just full auto spray them yeah. down. It's got enough of this exactly that, that it's going to be tough, which is, which is totally realistic. Yeah. That's the hard part. The hard part is not the macro controls. It's the, fine it's the micro controls. controls. Exactly. When you're full autoing a gun in real life, you never go, where's the guy I'm shooting at? Because you're looking up, which is what old Tarkov recoil was. You the can see like the this. target. It's just keeping it on that exact spot is kind of rough. So that's what this feels like. Full autoing appears to be laser beamy. <laughs> I contest only because we've been blinded. Like it appears to be laser beamy because what we've been used to is just like freaking, I don't know, Parkinson's. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yep. so 
I don't think it's as laser beamy as people think. I think, uh, and then here's the thing. If it's, even if it's as laser beamy as people think, if it's harder to get the good ammo and semi-auto and burst firing isn't AIDS, wouldn't you still just rather burst them down to conserve your ammo? If somebody's 40 meters away and you're full autoing them, like, do you really think you're going to hit that many more shots? Then just going bam, 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 bam. And like, you know what I mean? So yep. even if technically it is a little laser beamy, which I don't think it's as laser beamy as people think, but even if I give that to them and say it is, if the ammo is harder to come by and you want to conserve your ammo, you don't want to have to repack after every engagement. Once again, I feel like we're just super used to bad habits. Re you have to repack mags after every single engagement. We just like, I think you'll, you'll just come to want to tap fire more because you can just put, it's not AIDS. You can put pretty accurate shots on people. Yeah. So that's so what I think. Wait a month or two yeah. when people are using the meta stuff. And here's the thing. People are going to forget that there were plenty of meta guns that had fucking yeah. no recoil beforehand. People are now going to be bitching and moaning that more guns yeah. are controllable when before it was only a subset that were unavailable yeah. to most people if they didn't have the trader levels, if they didn't have the money. Yeah. And now you don't need the trader levels of money to have things that are manageable and controllable. Yeah. And now we're going to like yeah. the fact that a stock M4 feels so goddamn good means now I can fucking mod guns and they look cool. Yes. And they I don't have to make one gun that 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 look that looks lame yeah. and performs well. Now I can have a ton of guns that fucking look cool and I can actually role play. Yeah. You know, like yeah. all of my I always had to basically have AIDS guns whenever I wanted to do cool shit. Yep. Yep. Uh every time yeah two months from now when people are gonna be like dude uh, like they're gonna be like all we have is laser beams now I liked it better when we didn't have laser beams. I'm just gonna pull up Desmond videos. Like you know what I mean? Like uh, using using the with any amount of recoil control skill and use, I mean, not saying that he's, he's bad. He's amazing, but like, and then pulling, pulling up a meta freaking thing, laser beam, like the, the, the argument that, that will come, which is that we have laser beams. Now we didn't used to, I liked it better before will be very easy to debunk. I'll just go back to an old VOD of me. It's in the hideout with an M4. Like I could put all 60 rounds on the small target in the back. Like, yeah. And think about arena. Remember how arena, what was most annoying to me were the uh either the RPK or even the foul point fire from close from arena range. Yeah. It didn't matter if it had a bunch of recoil, it would you were gonna get one tapped with it yeah. no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The MPX laser beam, that AK with the seven and forty was a fucking laser beam. Yep. And now guess what? When the all think guy turns the corner, I've got my DMR and I go headshot, 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 headshot. Now he fucking dies yeah. because I can hit him with a headshot because it's not bang. Okay. Well, um, latitude, longitude. Where the fuck am I? GPS uh, coordinates. Yeah. Let yeah. me, uh, where's, where's the wind turning? Oh, there's, oh, I'm dead. Right. So yeah. Yeah. It, what it does, what it's done is it's fucking equalized it to the point yeah. where so many more guns are fucking manageable instead of just as an annoying subset, yes. which is the whole point. And that goes back to what we were talking about with <sighs> like ground zero when I was saying we're going to talk about this later. And uh, um, so the two things I'll say is one, just like the armor hit or the ammo thing, I can give you my opinion based on what I've tested now. I really like it right now. Like I said, in good faith, I acknowledge that it might be overtuned and it might need adjustments at the top end when all of those attachments are in the game, right? Like I, I, I can That's true, but don't say it. No, That's true, but don't say it. Don't give them that because Nikita will go. Oh, okay, cool. Bring it back yeah, ninety-eight yeah, percent, and then I'll quit the game again. But here's the thing. But here's what I was saying. It goes back to the like. When we're talking about Ground Zero, I'm like, even if Ground Zero isn't the perfect new map, it, it, we end up in a world as a net positive. Like some, because I was having that exact argument. I mean, you just made it, but I was having. He was like, "Man, all guns are just gonna end up like the meta at the top end is just gonna be full auto laser, full auto laser beamy meta." And I'm like, "Okay, I disagree with you. Let's say you're 100 percent right. Would you rather live in a world where the meta at the top end is full auto laser beamy guns and every other gun is AIDS, or?" A world where the meta at the top end is all five guns are laser beamy and every other gun in the game is usable. And semi-auto is fun on every gun. And noobs can actually hit shots. And he was like, fair point. You know what I mean? So it's like, even if you concede the entire argument, 
even if I say you're right, every meta gun is gonna be a laser beam, that world is still better than the world we had 72 hours ago because mm -hmm. they were still laser beaming guns at the top end. So it's like, I don't know. I'm not saying it is or isn't because I don't have a meta M4 yet, but I'm saying even if it is, every other gun in the game is just more fun to use now. So I don't know. So we'll, we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see, but it just still feels like a net positive. Even if at the top end it's an L, it still feels like a net positive. You know why it feels that way? Because it is. Yeah, it is. Um, and so I agree, I, I think, and I hope that what they've done is uh, modified some of the attachments so the disparity between them isn't... Like, this is the perfect patch to do what we've said a million times, where it's like, normalize all the attachments. Like, you know what I mean? Make like, instead of one meta suppressor, make 11 and reduce the thing. So now make attachments less effective than they were before. And before you yell at me, you can make them less effective as they were before because the base guns are more effective than they were before. Now what you end up with is an attachment system that does help your gun. It helps at a relatively small amount and you build guns similar to in real life, if you want to go the realistic way, the way you like them. Do you like long barrel? Do you like short barrel? Do you like suppressed? Do you like unsuppressed? Do you like flashlight on the right, on the left? What kind of handguard do you like? Like, you know what I mean? This Nick is, attachment's great again. We should sell yeah, MAGA hat. This is, <laughs> this is, um, this is the wipe to do that. I hope they did it. But, and then the other thing that, and, and I get, I get, you know, maybe people don't believe BSG on everything they say. I, I certainly don't. But the, the other thing is, um, the important thing here is they mentioned this in the ETS and they mentioned it here in the patch notes. The new, recoil, the new recoil mechanic now includes a variety of flexible settings, allowing for balance adjustments based on analytical data and player feedback. So what I hope that that means is if we're like, oh, damn, if in two weeks, you know, if in a week Rengar gets level 60 and we're like, oh, dude, the freaking juice cannon is a laser. It's got 50 rounders, M62. It's just like, that's what everyone's going to use. If they've designed the system in such a way that they can be like, oh, man, like, we did a balance pass on all 308 guns. The SA-58 is a little overtuned. We can tune that back without having to break everything else they've done. That will also be a W. And so that's mm -hmm. what I'm hoping for. I mean, yeah, dude. Five million percent. So, um, all right. The Lightkeeper services. Uh, oh, fuck off. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'll I'll never I'll never it'll yeah. be a fucking miracle, dude. If I ever see yeah. Lightkeeper, it'll be yeah. a miracle. Yeah. Uh the Zarachi support and the rogue support seem to be both the way it's worded. Like you have to use them in that raid, which kind of is weird. The other thing you can get from him is called a sacred amulet. And if you have that amulet on in the raid, cultists will uh not attack you. So that's like an item you get from him and then take to another raid. I found that pretty interesting. Mm. Um okay. You can view player profiles. So now when someone kills you, you can view their profile and see their uh, survival rate <laughs> and stuff like that. Uh, I've already I've already seen, like I go to my Twitter feed and it's just posts of fucking screenshots of people that yeah. get ready. I'm, I'm just ready for the, the like witch hunt meta over like mm -hmm. now we now we're going to know based on certain specific stats mm -hmm. if someone's cheating or not, even though some subset of them i'm sure a lot of these people with x stat or y number yeah. value for whatever people have determined that that 100 means cheating if that was the case then i mean that would be really easy for bsg to just program those thresholds right maybe there's a reason why yeah it's yeah, not 100 yeah, yeah. um you know like the one guy that goes to the one fucking south african server and plays yeah. on a map that no one plays on and all he does is farm hatchet run shoreline you know whatever and he has a bajillion things and he's never died and yeah yeah because he, yep, yep, he has a yep, 90 something yep. whatever yeah but but i will say that um there were there were a few times i died pulled up someone's um profile profile and looked at the stats and were like this looks totally normal you know like yeah 51% survival rate, you know, like, yep. I'm like, okay, like, no reason to think this, bro. but again, there are also plenty of people that cheat that are just dog shit. Yeah. They're bots. Yeah. And, or people that tank their SRs, like, yeah. So I, I don't know, like, yeah, I think it's more just cool. I don't think it really has any effect on the cheating situation because, yeah, 
I, I like I like that it's in the game. Yep. I'm just preemptively rolling my eyes I, for yeah. it's going to be the new thing that everybody just died to another fucking guy with a Chinese name and he's got 900 billion raids and he's got six hours in the game and he's got, you know, like, OK, yeah, yeah we get it. You know, like, yeah. fuck, Jesus. I agree. I agree. Um, they changed the ammo. They changed it, uh, adjusted the barter, uh, adjusted a lot of barters, adjusted the availability of armor. Um, they expanded crest rewards. You will now be, uh, rewarded with more things. Um, uh, oh, this is an interesting one. Oh no. I accidentally hit quote section or whatever, and it took me to the bottom. Um, row, row. They changed some quests, uh, and okay. they're simple ones, and they make a lot of sense. You might, you know the quest setup? I've complained about this literally every single wipe. You have to wear the Ushanka and the Scav Vest and kill people on customs with a shotgun. Yep. Okay. I always mauled about how you don't get that quest until you're level 38 when you finally have unlocked some traders and you actually have some guns and you can't use them, right? Because it's like, haha, go use the shotgun. Uh, you get set up at level 18 now. You do Friend from the West Part 2, then you get set up, then you get Informed Means Arm, then you get Chumming, then you get Bullshit, then you get Silent Caliber. So much better. I think that's awesome. Uh, and then they adjusted some of the Punisher tasks to move them around uh, to some other maps. Like one of the Punisher tasks is the same thing. It's just kill scavs on reserve instead of shoreline because there were like eight shoreline ones in a row. Um, Tarkov Shooter Part 4 was one of the ones where it was just like get to this level sniper skill and everybody would just sit in bushes and reload Mosins. Now that's just like get four kills on PMCs from 80 meters away. Um, I don't even think they have to be headshots. I think it's just kills. So it's like, okay, snipe no, yeah. instead of sit in a bush and reload your Mosin. Um, balancing changes to crafting, adjusted the... Did they, wait, did they ever change... You get... Or did, I, or did I dream this? That you get different XP for where you're hitting with your sniper rifle? No, you don't get different XP. You get the same, which is why shooting legs is still... I literally, I literally dreamt it, dude. I actually, dude. I unironically had a dream where it was like, you get fucking 25 XP for a headshot. You're at 2,500 oh. XP. Ugh, fuck, dude. I, I, oh, my God, dude. This is the, like the third thing in the last like three weeks that I've dreamt about Tarkov. Yikes. And, and that's problematic. Yikes. Um adjusted the armor crafts. Uh, oh, yeah, you need plates to craft armors. Adjusted ammo crafts, reduced the production time and the costs of cheap ammunition. So they're making, they're trying to incentivize crafting the cheaper ammunition. I don't know what they've done at the top end for the better ammunition. Um, you know, this one was funny because it's like so vague. I'm glad they did. It was like, you know, the, the damage and armor penetration parameters of different caliber ammunitions have been revised and adjusted. So it's like, oh, geez, <laughs> you know, yeah, that, yeah, battle buddy. No, that could be. Yeah, um, this was an interesting thing. Balancing changes to muzzle devices. Muzzle devices have been rebalanced. Suppressors, muzzle adapters, flash hiders and compensators have all been adjusted. I'm hoping there's the meta attachments will be Say something three times without fucking saying anything at all. They yeah. adjusted the adjusted. We made yeah. adjustments. To the adjustment. I'm hoping that that means muzzle adapters and compensators are the best in slot for recoil but then suppressors might be more valuable to you because you're solo and you want to stay silent right that's yeah. what i'm hoping <laughs> the btr on streets have you seen any of the twitter clips of this dude negative brother <laughs> it's so cool it's so cool you hear it oh yeah that was another thing that was another thing that we were fucking begging for years yeah they freaking, dude, the, the BRT just rolls around. It sits at a stop for like one to two minutes. And then it, whether you've paid him or not, he moves on and he goes to the next stop. And uh, what you do is it can fit four people inside. And you, uh, so you don't interact with it outside. You walk up to it and you press F on it. And dude, it's such a sick animation. You claw open the door. You put your hand on the top and you get in and you close the door behind you. And then from inside, you can talk to the driver. And what you can ask him to do is... Um, heard, heard any rumors? Yeah, there actually is what's the news. <laughs> There's an actually... Yeah, literally. I think it's just like a meme. Yeah, um, I've got rats in my fucking basement that you, you need to slay 30 rats. Yeah, like, yeah, Please yeah. come back and I'll give you a fucking health potion. Um, And then you can say like, you know, what services do you offer? And... uh. You can travel to other another location on the map, and it it'll show you. And it's like depending on how far you weigh, is how many rubles. It's all between like six and eight k rubles. 
and you can get in and he'll take you to another part of the map. Um, you can uh, pay for covering fire, which means like when you get to the location you're going, it'll just shoot at anything like player scavs, Anything PMCs, not anything not you, if you pay for Can't it. Can't wait till that bugs out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you pay for it, and then he fucking just one-taps yeah. you? Yeah. All right, th bitch. And then there's the um, move items to stash. Now, here's the thing. It is a little bit of an L. It's not as cool as I wanted it. It's oh, no. It's literally eight slots. That's that's all you can move. Eight slots. So you, I suppose for quest items, yes, it's is incredibly where it's gonna be, valuable. You get like a lead X. You fucking, I don't want to leave because I got a lead X and a, and like a you know a roller or whatever. Or I'm you here just go, to do this take quest. Care of it, yeah. And then you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is how it is. You have it's really nice for quest items, but it's not going to be super valuable later on, which is what I hoped it would be. You know what I mean? Like a reason to stay in the raid. But it's still yeah. really cool. You pay him for that. You drag items into those eight slots. And depending on the value of the item is how much you pay. So like I saw a clip of Rengar. He had a found and raid Salua, a found and raid gas analyzer, like a roller, and like a few other treasure items. And it was like 30,000 rubles to transfer all that to Oh, okay. Stash. I was I was afraid it was going to be 80% of the fucking... Yeah, yeah. You're going to have a 1.8... Wait, okay. Do you have to have the cash on you? Yes. So oh! I hate bringing cash into raids. So Fuck. now you need to be bringing like 100k into a streets raid. Yeah. I mean, the, see, the, here's the thing. The difference between fucking one ruble and 100,000 rubles yeah. is nothing, nothing, right? It's just until you get like a... Uh, I, I don't even like carrying wallets. Yeah, like a dox case like, or a sick case. Yeah, but but yeah, until you get one of those... Um, yeah. Yeah, okay. But, well, uh, but it's really cool. Listen, Ws or Ws. Uh, and, and the thing is, is that the... The transport is sick. I spawned as a scav. I found 8,000 rubles on a dead scav. I had a quest item I needed on me. I, because we're so low karma, streets is so big. And when you're low karma, you don't have all the extracts available to you. So the extract is on the other side of the map. I literally got into the BTR, paid him with the 8,000 rubles I found into the raid, and he took me to my extract. And I got out with the quest item, and it was the sickest experience ever. Are you? And are you like, dude? That was us going to the fucking shooting range at TwitchCon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In the fucking Hummers, just like yes, rolling dude. through traffic. One hundred percent. So, so are you at risk at all of dying not during that at process? All. You, uh, because you're not interacting with them outside. You just get in. I mean, you can be shot while you're getting in, and then yeah, uh, yeah. you're in the whole time, and you're just like you're just like sitting in the thing and, and like bouncing around. <laughs> And then he, uh, you pop out. If you're in and you haven't asked him to do anything, when his timer gets up, he just kicks you out. Like you just pop out. Uh, like if you don't have money or something. Uh, also, it will kill you if it runs you over. Sealable did some science for us. It will oh, kill well, you. Well. If it and runs by that, you. I'm assuming it touches you and you just crumple, ragdoll. Crumple to death, yes. It yeah. doesn't like, ah! although there is. Okay, wait, I I hope it has to play the one voice line that I hear like 80% of the time for some reason, which is like, oh, oh, my God, I'm yeah. fucking oh, crying. Oh, it's like, oh, oh. oh, dude, I, I, at first I thought it was someone voiping that, yeah. like in, in, in arena. Oh, yeah. So uh, it's so sick, man. The BTR is really, really cool. Um, the BTR is neutral to all players unless a player starts attacking it, then it'll kill you. Or if someone purchases covering fire, the BTR becomes hostile. Um, oh my god! So wait, you can like roll up to it without knowing if it's f aggroed or, yeah. or not. Yeah. Oh no. Um. So there's. Oh no. So dude, there's that. that. Sucks. The BTR it is really like, cool. It doesn't like glow red. Like it should have a fucking light on the front that yeah. like turns red. That actually after would you be do sick. that? Yeah. That would be. Otherwise, sick. you're gonna be like, oh, sick. Here's my red. It's gonna go, like, you know, like. Yeah. In, Oh. And then last few things here. The visual effect of the painkillers has been changed. It's weird, but it's the I like it. it's the best of the three options we've had. I think yeah. I think the I think the transition from color to no color is too stark. It's eight pixels roughly between full color and black and white. I think if it took that and did yep. a gradient and just pulled the saturation out at at the edge, it wouldn't be so jarring. But I, I took that I'll in the it. in the the tent, the new like medical tent in factory. Yeah. There's the yellow suit 
and I was doing this, and it was just like a hard line where it's like yellow, white, yep. yellow, white. And it's like, wow, yeah. that's fucking jarring, but it's way better. But it's way better. Like, I was rejoicing. It You get like, have you noticed towards the end of your painkiller, right when it starts to wear off, then you get like a boom where your vision goes blurry for like a second and then pulls back. No, so you get a cool. little bit of the vision blur, but it's not at the beginning, which is important because if you're taking painkillers, you need to be in the fight, right? And uh, and then it doesn't do the sharpening or the freaking blurry vision. It just pulls some color out around the edges, and it's so much better. It's yeah, that's been so that's much been better. an annoying thing that I'm I'm looking forward to them getting into arena because I've been I'm on marksman you know most of the time these days, and I'm sitting there sniping, and it's like I it's already hard enough to have like peripheral vision. Now it's like I explicitly don't, you know, because yeah, you yeah. start and you go, you know, every yeah. fucking raid. Um, oh, that's the other best part of the fucking G28 kit is that all I need to do, I just, I take the, it has the ranging, oh, the range finder. Yeah. I just drag it over it so it goes on the right side because yeah. I use it for the laser, obviously not for yeah. the range. Um, but like otherwise, oh, and the two stems are good stems, but they only last 60 seconds. So I use them. I don't pre-pain. So oh. that's the other benefit is that like open up the thing, click and drag oh, like one attachment and I'm done. Nice. I actually hate the other kits where I'm like, tss, tss, move the fucking flashlight. Yeah. Move yeah. The thing. It's it's too much bullshit at the beginning of every fucking round. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, especially when you're playing Russian roulette where at any point all of your clicks could be interrupted with a countdown starts. Your menu goes away and you, poof, and you right shoot the, the dude in front head. of you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um. And then they opened up a few new interiors on streets. Um, nothing crazy, just like a few places you walk by and you're like, oh, I can go in here now. And it's cool, you know, more stuff to loot, I more filing cabinets and stuff like that, which is sick. I hope they do that on the new map because I was like, had the experience where I'm like, oh, fake door. Oh, fake door. Oh, fake door. Oh, fake. Oh, I'm dead. Sick. Yeah, 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 yeah. The new map is sick. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's no, like... I agree. That was our, that was a criticism <laughs> of streets at first and it's come a long way. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's come a long way, so I hope they do that on the new map too, on Ground Zero. But um, dude, so so that's that's the wipe. That is the Tarkov wipe. I really think this is one of the greatest, if not the greatest, wipe of all time. And once again, I, I, like I, I like the trolls are out there. You know what I mean? The people that are just like frustrated to be frustrated, that hate you know X, Y, or Z. But the sentiment largely is that that like the, like. There may be some concerns about some features. I share some of those concerns about some of those features, but almost every single thing in this entire patch is in the W column. Some of them are like, couldn't have done it better myself. So I am so excited. To go back to what you were saying at the beginning, it has not rekindled my desire to do these quests again. Like, I am really just looking forward, like... I didn't get Kappa last wipe. It was the first time I ever chose I don't want to get Kappa because I don't want to do these stupid quests. I was like, I'm going to take a wipe off and I really think next wipe is going to be a really big wipe. I've three days and I've already decided I'm not doing Kappa again. I am questing exactly as much as I need to to get level four traders and I am done, bro. Like it is just... And then it's going to be arena time. I have it, no but... desire. No, like, like, but uh, I wonder, the game I wonder is fun. how, I think that's going to be like the meta. It, it, like when, yeah. when people would like some people are going to grind for the kappa because the people want to see the grind for the kappa. Yeah. Um, but like I, I feel like most people uh, or at least I don't know. I, I kind of hope that the meta becomes. Yeah. Uh, you get all the level four traders and the people that don't want kappa will just go play arena. Yep. <laughs> because it's like I think that's if, what you I'm don't, do. if you don't if you don't care about the economy and you don't care about the quests, yeah. then like, then to me, like, I don't want to go loot boxes all day. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. I just, want, I want the combat. I want the excitement of the fucking one V four. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, and, and the worst part to like dovetail into what you were saying to me, the worst, most frustrating part of the, of the wipe so far has been sitting in queue. Yeah. Coming from arena where I was, where arena is either, instantly get into a game yeah and then get frustrated by we yeah still yeah, have yeah. To wait like three minutes for loading loot and wait and finding server where it's like come on now we're like yeah. fuck they really need to sort out the goddamn fucking queuing and matchmaking in both games they just both need to games. fucking figure it out um and, and maybe we should talk a little bit about 
arena and, and uh, afterwards or actually i don't even know how long we have oh, actually we're already over and we're already over um, but we can talk about it the, the only the last tarkov <clears throat> thing that i was gonna say because i did want to talk about arena a little bit was on top of the fattest w wipe of all time in the middle of the day today we load into a raid and it's snowing and they and it was the sickest it was like if you would Bet me $100,000 whether they were going to put snow in Tarkov ever. I would have taken that bet yesterday. I would have taken that bet <laughs> 10 hours ago. I would have taken that bet never. And not only did they do it, but the attention to detail. That's what got detail, me to switch to, to Tarkov. Yeah. That, that single-handedly. The attention to detail is insane. Not only did they did it, not only did they do it, which I never thought they would. If, they, if I knew they were doing it, I would have bet you $100,000 it wasn't as good as what they did. Like mm -hmm. it and 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 just how they did it, man. The fact that people have been asking for snow maps for as long as I've been playing the game since 2018. The fact that like they just turned it on, there was no patch. The fact that they replaced the the rain weather with snow, it'll snow intermittently. The the sound design of the footsteps crunching in the snow. The fact that all of the foliage in the area is dead, like you can't like sit in a bush anymore. Like you can see through the bushes. Um, yep, and you can, and the, the grass isn't annoying. The grass isn't annoying. The uh, the visibility is insane, insane. When you're not flat, dude, I spawned on an interchange, instant flashbang, like ah, yeah, fuck. yeah, yeah. Well, that's because the lighting is awful. Um, the visibility is really good. It sounds really good. It's just magical, dude. The fact that on the tops of all the duffel bags is a little white snow. The if, fact if that- If they're like next to a window. Yes, that dude. I walked up in, uh, all the interiors are normal. I was in a uh, big red and I opened the, the Tarkov director's office key and next to the window, the PC, half the desk and the windowsill have snow on it. And I was like, dude, oh my God. It was like magical, dude. I, I know, and I know it doesn't change anything, but like, dude, tracking people through like bleeds, heavy bleeds, it's so bright. You can see where somebody was like bleeding and where they went. Dude. I wish there were I wish there were footprints, but I'm not gonna fucking Yeah. It's like I can understand. I can understand that like dealing with how long they stay in and XYZ or whatever. But like, dude. I was Some people are saying there's footprints. I kept looking and it looked like no. there were moments where I thought I saw footprints, but there weren't. I don't, I don't think there are. We were with we were in a three man and we were all looking down, like walking around in circles. And I don't think there were any footprints. I think sometimes it kind of like looks like like there's like a weird thing in the snow and that looks like that was a footprint. But I don't think there are footprints. Yeah, no, um, I mean, I I love it. I I. I love the sound of the the, the ambiance of the footprints, uh, the, the the footsteps. Although with like contacts, it's it's so, I can't it's hear so anything. loud. Yeah, it's too loud. Yeah. Now I haven't heard anyone. I haven't heard an enemy on the snow yet. Okay. I, I I've I gotten one outdoors fight on shoreline, and it was like seventy meters, and I had my pistol, and I think I shot the guy seven hundred times. <laughs> I must have been whiffing. I don't know what happened, and then he just fucking disappeared. Yeah. Uh, I, I I couldn't find him, but so I just. I'm walking and I'm like, I can't hear anybody. And I feel like everybody can hear me. Yeah. It's, TBD as you, to whether or not you that's can. The case. I mean, yeah, you definitely can hear like people far away. <laughs> so it is broadcasting your location, but you can hear other people too. I think it is too loud, but that was just a, a, such a surprise, such a surprise, man. But, um, but yeah, another super surprising thing that happened and we can do this quick. Yeah. Cause we're two and a half hours already, but like the day after the wipe, we get a big arena patch with a new map for shootout, which I still haven't played shootout a single time. And all those new mechanics, man, like uh, the recoil. It doesn't have armor. Oh, but true. It has recoil. Vaulting and left shoulder and, shooting. Yep. Yeah. And it's and it was all fucking fantastic. Um, the so the problem is, is that 99% of the fucking community went and played the wipe. Yeah. So unless you're like low ish elo yeah. or squatted up. It's hard to find games. It, it's hard to find games. Um, yeah, and I don't people know. are still just now getting access to Arena. Apparently, every, everybody has it now. Everybody should have it. Okay. So if you don't have it, I I don't know what to tell you, but Nikita said in the podcast, oh, everybody did has he? it. Okay, okay, okay. I so, didn't know that. So, and which is what I was like, just fucking. If you don't, if you don't have it, then you either need to check your email or whatever. I don't know, but 
no longer yell at streamers for not having mm-hmm. access because everybody should have access. Who sh- who is supposed to have access? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, it's been massive W. I just hate fucking waiting in queue mm-hmm. and, and um the so the real contentious thing is the matchmaking because they made a change yeah that it's i it just doesn't make sense doesn't make sense a bunch of people have come in and said it changed everything for them a bunch of other people said like it's been amazing other people have said it's been terrible for me yeah it's uh, the exact same thing so so let me let me put it to you this way it shouldn't be the case that i queue up at 2800 arp or i'm just gonna say elo because i refuse to say fucking arp that i queue up and i can't get into a game for fucking 15 minutes yeah but if i queue up with four people from a thousand elo to 2500 yeah i get into a game in one second yeah the game's okay with me playing with those people, just only if I know them. Yeah. Put why? Why not put me in with randos? At yeah. you know. A, a, a. So, people defending the current system need to recognize that, like, you can still do it. Exactly. You just have to. You just have to do it yourself. The game won't do it for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Really, in my opinion, they should do a thing where it's you know like like they've done with with um like region stuff where. You look for fucking three minutes. If you can't find anything, expand the search to like one server yeah, over yeah, yeah. or 500 more ELO or whatever. I don't know. But the whole idea, what they changed was now it takes into consideration the average purchase Meta price. Meta points. Oh, sorry. MP. The, yeah, sorry. The average gear score yeah. of of recent games so i don't know what that means if how that's like games? everybody on your team how many games because one game could it be five games to me it not only does it not really make sense because you might have been leveling up shitty sniper yeah. like uh, everybody's gonna go bowl with their new marksman kit they're uh, level one and they're gonna like do that for a while and then instantly queue up with their fucking Alton kit yeah. on every other map, and they're going to be facing Timmy's, I guess. Exactly. The Super problem, weird. Like here's the here's the thing. There's your gear, and there's skill. Yeah. There's Elo, and gear score. People want both. There's, I I don't know. You would need like millions and millions and millions and millions of people playing. You need an infinite number of people to to put you with nine other players yeah that all have similar gear and skill to you yeah. because there are people that are 1200 arp with alton kits they're exactly. fucking bad but they played a bunch but they played enough then, to unlock the kit and then there are gods that just played the last few games leveling up something low level so it what it should be is it should just be based on your skill level yeah and the gear I don't know. I, I, I agree about this so much. They I don't just even know. Need unranked. That's where you level stuff, right? In Apex Legends, you would never go in a ranked mode. You would, if you were like diamond or platinum. I don't even know what the stupid ranks are. And you were going for Apex Predator. You'd never go in if you already had a high elo with a champion you've never played before. You'd go to pubs and you'd learn that champion, and you'd be like, maybe I want to do this and use this champion to rank up to whatever right yeah. it's like it's insanity just open unranked because then if you don't have anything to lose it like i'm not saying that that's the perfect solution because like you said the, the gear and the skill how those things match together and how tarkov does their kits and how it does their gear and the balancing of them but i'm saying the easiest thing in the world is just open unranked because then you're making the choice you're saying i'm going to go into ranked so i'm going to use my good kit I want to unlock another tree. I'm going to go into unranked. And at least now you're just in control. You're saying, I'm going to go into ranked. I'm going to use my best kit because I'm not sure the skill level, the ARP, or the gear score of the person I'm going against. So I'm going to use the kit that I'm most comfortable using. Bada bing! Why? What? Uh, And then if you're in unranked and you have nothing to lose, then uh, once again, there are still issues to solve about creating a more fun experience. But at least you could go grind out your kits and not be losing your rank. You know what I mean? It's just like, I don't know. See, I don't, I don't even think that like people are upset about losing their rank. 
they're upset about being against people with yeah, better a consistent gear. experience. Yeah. Um, I get that. Yeah, it's it's complicated. I I actually had like a bunch more mega nuanced points about this explaining why the current system is so bad. I literally have talked about it so much it's out of my brain. I I can't even I can't I even formulate you. the thoughts. The I mean, problem the problem is is that there aren't enough people mixed with yeah. the balancing is hot garbage. Yeah. And the design of all of the presets is basically hot garbage. Yeah. So many of them are just dog water yeah and and then so many other ones are just brainless you just hold w and hold mouse one and you win yeah um and a lot of people think that that's why they're losing and 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 for a lot of people that is why they're losing yeah but a lot of times they're just getting stomped by better players who also happen to have better gear yeah if you gave if there are people who, if you gave them an Alton and you put them against some of the people they're playing against, who has a fucking Mosin and no armor, they will get wrecked by the dude with the Mosin and no armor yeah. because they'll the 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 gear be, the gear diff in my opinion becomes magnified the higher in skill you get. Yeah. If you put, uh, I don't need to come up with an example that 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 stands for itself. Yeah. The better you get, you know, um, it, we saw this when we were playing on like day two or three yeah and we were all on like level two actually i think i had like decided to go from yes one class to and another. i was leveling up marksman so and i went like zero and six for 10 hours which is why my kd is like 0.8 now yeah um because we were facing fucking landmarks team and then the next one was fucking smitty and then the next yeah. one was fucking yeah you know it, we, we were just facing yeah. five squads and they were three kits above me yeah so, you know, but then those guys, like I remember Landmark faced against, um, I don't remember who else, who they, they were Trey's playing, but there was team. Trey's team who were like two kits above them and they were getting 0 and 5. They were getting yep. fucking stomped. And all of us, all of us could recognize how much the gear yeah, played mattered. a yeah. part in that. Um, but I'm not convinced that if you put, like that a lot of the lower level people, if you gave them Altons, that yeah, they would. That, that, it, that's not an instant win button. The skill makes a, a is a huge part of it. Yeah. But but then at the same time, it's like a lot of times if they're that bad, then their opponents are that bad. Then they're they're almost kind of unkillable because the people yeah. can't hit any shots. Yeah. So I don't know. It it it's, sucks all around. Sucks the all problem, around. once again, there is is the balancing of the gear yeah, and the availability of the options you have and everything to build that into the matchmaking just doesn't make sense, but I'm not articulating why. Cause I, again, I'm, I can't remember. I agree though. Uh, I really I just hope don't think that it's going to be a solution. Yes. Going back to the solution that they put in, I don't think that's going to be a, a solution. I'm hoping yeah. that by the and, time and I get back to it, everybody's high enough ARP that I'm fighting people that are actually my skill level. Well, get so you haven't played arena since this happened. No, your first game, you're going to be against a bunch of dudes with fucking. They're wearing paper bags on their heads and they're shooting you with like like rubber band launchers. Yeah, because you don't. Uh, I think this is this is what I've seen, and I haven't had anybody to go against this. And this would this was my assumption was that they didn't like pre cash what you spent beforehand. Oh, interesting. So it doesn't know what you're. So it put me against a bunch of like D minuses. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I went like seventeen and two for like the first couple games. I was just shitting on kids. Yeah. And I had, and I had my previously underpowered um, M eighty RSAS kit that had, you know, like fucked up level four yeah. armor or whatever that was underpowered against everybody else I was playing against. And then it, yeah. So a bunch of people are still, which goes to show you some of the problems of the assumptions of this whole thing. Yeah. Which is like it's just guessing. It is just and there's guessing. There's going to be yeah. so many more. There's going to be so many more examples where you're going to get matched up against somebody who's going to have way better shit than you. Yeah. Because they would have had other shit that they used before. Yes. That they switched to. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So the game is just fucking guessing. And before it was kind of like it wasn't guessing. It just wasn't taking it into account. So it yeah. was a coin flip then. Now it's a coin flip. It's weird. 
It's weird. It was like I I read it and I was like I'm glad that this is an admission that the system isn't good, but I don't think this is a good replacement system. You know what I mean? It was like at yeah. least they're on it, but I this it, can't it be like, like a long term solution. No, no, and it, it seems like the money situation is a little bit better. Oh yeah, that was much people were more. Just going, people were just going broke. Yeah, that was. It's much more determined by your uh, performance, right? Like they they increase the money. Oh no, was it? That's XP. They increase the XP for. You're right. They, they the, might, the money. They I think have. they just the money they just blanket increased, which was nice. But the uh, the XP. They reduce the amount of XP you get slightly for a win, but they increase the amount of XP you get for every action, for a kill, for a headshot, yeah, yeah. for a you know a shutout, and so you so could, you can like lose and get like five exactly, which you couldn't get more was, than like three yeah. k on a loss. Yeah, so that that was cool. That was a good change. That and the money. What I read in the patch notes for the XP and the money were both good changes. Yeah, and they, and they also um like I, there was a game. That, I don't know. Maybe I got like eleven kills in or something. I got I made like three hundred and seventy k or something, which was what? Like, yeah, it was the like most a lot. I had ever seen was two hundred. I'm over. Yeah, I'm like over seven mil. No, they did also give everybody one mil or one point five mil. They just like gave it as a part. Oh of like yeah, the white. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, overall, I think it's a little bit better. It's a little bit more balanced. The, the the progression system sucks. The, the the whole thing it's it's always going to be a problem, um, and uh, I won't harp on, yeah, um, exactly why. But no, but I feel know, the, yeah. I'm 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 really excited about Arena. I like I'm super into Tarkov right now and this wipe and consuming it, and I'm going to create a lot of content for it. But like I'm so excited that I have this in the back of my head that I'm like I'm super excited to go. Like I don't know if it's a week from now or two weeks from now or a month from now, but like. I, we said it. I mean, we talked about it last week on the podcast. Some of the most fun I'd had playing in the Escape from Tarkov universe ever was the first day or two of Arena. Like it had so much potential, so much fun. So I'm glad they're making changes. I was surprised and delighted that they brought some of these huge features to Arena that quickly. And I really hope they continue to flesh it out because like I am so excited to go back and play more of it. Um, you know what I mean? I'm just like, I want, I'm excited for more people to come back. Cause I, I hate Tarkov. <laughs> no, no. I mean, no, I know. I, I know what you mean. I'm waiting in queue. No, for sure. I, I want to play when I, and when I'm playing arena, I want to fucking play. Yeah. And, and here's the downside. The only way I can play now is by queuing with a five man squads. And the only five man squads are average viewers that are potentially a thousand or fifteen hundred elo lower than me yeah and because of how bad the fucking elo system is like we talked about i'm just going plus 25 plus 25 plus 25 plus 20 so i'm like i'm at some point i'm i might even already be above my fucking skill level yeah because yeah the system is so bad that you can very easily and not even intentionally just blow yeah. past your proper rating because the only way for you to sit down for eight hours and actually play more than three matches is to invite your viewers in to play with you, which brings down the average ELO of the squad and then XYZ. And it's like, yeah, it's it's scuffed. It's and it's definitely not who the leader is. It's definitely not. Because I was oh, okay. Um, it, it definitely is taking into account, and it was before this patch too. Um, it definitely was taking into account like everybody. Everybody. Because, yeah, I I facing a ton of fucking Timmies, you know, on their uh, on like the the Vepper Hunter builds, even like, when every you're game, a leader, like, yeah, yeah. Um, now there are also the fucking D minuses that have the Alton kits, yeah, and they're bots. Yeah, they, they like they're very bad. It's crazy how a D plus to C, the dudes with the Altons, and this is why this is where the gear diff, yeah, it matters, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it, when I face against Landmark and he's got an Alton, I'm not killing him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I face against someone at my level or below with an Alton, maybe not at my level, but slightly below me and infinitely down, you, you just your lose. Alton ain't yeah. gonna help you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because your reaction time is too fucking slow, and and I can now with the new recoil, yeah, I can put three shots in your helmet while you're running before you're able to one tap me. Yep. It's a, it's like so your gear don't fucking matter. Yeah. It, and yeah. that's where now Tarkov lets you be more. Yep. You have more agency over, your, you know, whereas before with when there's a lot of recoil and whatever, then I probably would be dying to some of these worst players with better gear. Yep. 
which is would feel great for them, but, but not very rewarding to want to continue yeah. playing the game. Like, you know, they have training wheels and they think they can ride a bicycle. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, I hope I hope it continues to improve. Um, but yeah, man, uh, we're we're a little over two and a half hours. I think that's that's the that's the stuff. That's what's going on. Uh, drops is happening, which uh, I was told this. I'm not 100 percent sure, but apparently they said that you're chill to play arena in the escape from Tarkov category. Then what? Fuck shit. To get dropped. I want. I wanted to do that, and I felt bad. Yeah. So I didn't. I didn't hear it, but Velian or uh, someone we were playing with today, I think Velian or maybe a mod, someone I trusted, said that, and I was like, "That's cool." Um. So yeah, because I want to play yeah, arena. So maybe seek that clarification or just go for it. I don't. I think just go for it, honestly. Um. But yeah, apparently it was said that you can that there that you can play Tarkov just in the or play arena in the Tarkov category and get drops. So, um, but yeah, anyways, drops is happening. Stick around. I think I'm the first and the fifth. I didn't check your dates. I'm the first and the sixth. Okay. Oh, you know what it was? I think we're on opposite shifts on the first because I found I was on the first and then I was like, who else am I with? And I didn't see anybody I know. So we might be on opposite shifts on the first. Anyways, we'll see. Drops, it's here. Get your stuff. My legendary drop was the Paratus backpack, which was the worst backpack in the game, and I immediately vendored it. So I don't know. Yeah. How, Fuck. I don't know how they're gonna be. But uh <laughs> the overall TLDR is fat, girthy, veiny W of a wipe. Uh I hope they continue to get over all the issues with uh whatever it was, getting people in, the stability of the wipe, but it's so good and it's so fun and getting through the stupid quests. This is like potentially the most fun Tarkov's been in. Um, dude, honestly, maybe ever. I don't know. So, uh, yep, that's it. Thank you guys for hanging. If you want more content like this, patreon.com slash the podcast pod. Our Patreon's pretty sick. We uh, record subscribe some. Subscribe to our fucking YouTube. Some PP over like there. Oh yeah, subscribe to we, YouTube. We, we never we never ask people to sub to the YouTube. We, we do sh fucking busting out mega shorts all the time. Yeah. Uh, Interact with the shorts, comment on them, like them, say how good Jesse looks. Um, fucking, um, um, uh, you like, I, I think that there's like ways to like rate podcasts on like iTunes and oh, shit. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like maybe do that. I think that matters. I've heard a lot I that that matters. We're such never bad podcaster. It. Help us, please. I, you know, fuck, please. I got kids. Um, yeah, I got kids. <laughs> but, uh, thank you guys for hanging. Thank you for being here. And uh, thank you for the support. You guys are the best. And we'll definitely see y'all on the next one. Peace.